Well, hello, and welcome back to Unnecessary Roughness. If you can see, this beautiful man is back from Mississippi. Hi. The family is back together. Tell them who's back. Brandon fucking Walker. Tell them, tell them, tell them what's back. Oh, Brandon fucking Walker. Tell him what's oh, back. No, he wants the Brandon. Heart. I know. I'm not saying it. I'm refusing. Tell him to what's say it. back. No. The heart and soul of the podcast. These people is back. are back on our YouTube channel again. Thank you for watching. If you are watching, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Make sure you like. Make sure you share. Again, we we put out other segments too as well. We put out the the DMs which sure have been do. popping. Mm -hmm. We put Jack and Katie put out other segments to get the discussion. This is where you need to watch it because our facial expressions yes are pretty fucking good. Yep. I will and, say this. And Casey's cans. <laughs> the high noon cans that are on the table. But oh. in this episode, we have another family fight. We hash it out. We do. Uh, don't false advertise. Uh, didn't, it's didn't not hey, uh, Make him watch it. Make him watch it. We watch have a, it. a family great. fight. We have a lot of fun hypotheticals. We go through the news and we do some win totals for two different conferences. Again, thank you for watching the YouTube. Share it with your friends. Like, subscribe, comment. Enjoy the show. Uh, on this air roughness, season three, episode two, Heart and Soul Returns. No, you were also on it last week. You just yeah. moved back you're in right, New York. You're right, you're right, you're right. Okay. Season three of Unnecessary, right, Unnecessary Roughness, season three, episode three, episode Heart, and Soul, Heart and Soul Returns in... Episode two? Episode yep. two. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Unnecessary Roughness, season three, episode two, Heart and Soul Returns to New York City. How about just the gangs back together? Can we not have okay, the gang right. back together? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right, you're yeah, right, okay, you're right. Okay, okay, um, okay. Season three, episode two of Unnecessary Roughness, Heart and soul returns, gang gets back together. Bang. You're not going to let this go, are you? Well, you know, Casey, it's just not every day that I get to sit in a room with two people that are at odds with each other, two mm -hmm. people that are, are, are ill at each other, two people that are not content with each other, two people that, uh, frankly, um, need to talk some things out, and I'm not involved in it. In fact, I would say probably this is the only time that you've been in a room. First time for me. Well, I don't know. Katie and Jack have gotten in a lot of fights Oh, uh, yeah, that's just Katie and Jack. They live at all. You odds. missed that's... one, by the way. Did I miss one? Yeah. You guys go at know. it? Who won? What? It was Katie just said something really oh, mean. Oh, Katie was so oh, mean. God, no, mean I to know. Jack? I, yeah. I know. Brandon, it was... Meaner than the time we had to cut out what she said to me? Brandon, let me tell yeah, you something. Yeah, because I would Brandon, say, yeah, I've had... It was... It, we were doing the YouTube intro, yeah, oh, man. and it was so stunningly mean that I was silent. Like she rendered me I, quiet. She she knocked the voice out of you. Yes. <laughs> and it if was, I and if it was reversed, I could have like you'd be fired. By the way, not like, fired. I suspended. Reprimanded. Reprimanded. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I will say that this cold open was supposed to be leaning into the fact that Jack and I are at odds, but now all of a sudden we we opened up an old wound. We opened up an old wound. cold open. We should talk about this on the show. I, right. So yeah. maybe we should start no, no, the podcast. Katie and I, Katie apologized right away and then it was like, it was fine. Well, she, she, never, she made a joke. It she was never fine. apologized to me for the things she said when oh, yeah, cut out did. of the show. I have an acts of kindness and service and gratitude. We are full of venom today. Remember when she said that thing we had to cut it out of the show? Yeah, that was crazy. I'm telling you right now, it was stunningly mean. Okay, but this isn't about Katie, all right? No, and it's how, not. How bad of a person she is. It's no, not about her. No, she's a good person. I will no, say, it was, it was more up. stunning what she said to you. This this isn't about there was okay. the fact that okay. I am a delicate flower and people should treat me better, and this isn't okay. about Katie mm -hmm. and how she likes to just hit people in the face with a baseball bat. This is about <laughs> you guys... And we're not going to take, I don't want to take long with this. We got to get to a show. We just college football. We got SEC media days. We got, uh, we got SWAC media days, got, apparently. Oh, whoa, whoa. Don't, Mr. Coach Sanders. Coach Sanders. I'm not calling him his first name no more. I'm going to. Oh, we'll you talk think you about can? it. Well, I know I can. You going to say it all sweet like that? I know I can. <laughs> I know I can. Uh, I I'll FaceTime him face right now. You should, I wish we could get you a plane ticket to go down to SWAC media just, days tomorrow and be like, uh, Dion. Dion. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, uh, Dion. And over everybody here. be so mad. I was like, no, he's actually my co-host. It's right. fine. Uh, yeah. It's fine. Uh, uh, should we do a? Let's do a. Let's do a show. We'll get into. The, okay, here's yes. the deal. Here's we'll start the, deal. the show first. Casey was on a show called Barstool versus America. So let's start the show first. Let's start, start the show first. Let's start the show. Hi, welcome to Unnecessary Roughness, Barstool's college football podcast, brought to you by the beautiful people. The delicious high noon hard seltzer. Mm. 
So the other night I was speaking to uh, some of the high noon reps that requested my presence at the uh, Jersey no, no, Shore event. No, no, this is you don't get to start. No, hold on. No, 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 hold on. No, no, no. It it all ties together. And I was telling them about how I've been asking for a year about bathing in peach, and they could not have gotten on their phones faster. Like I finally like said it to somebody because it was a nice environment for me to bring it up. It wasn't like no. a creepy one. And they're like, well. We can definitely get you enough peach can to I bathe just in. Point something out. Sure. Always a creepy environment to bring up you taking a bath in peach. Well, it, it makes more sense because you know, like when you have a really long conversation with people that you don't know, and right. you're kind of looking for common ground. There's only so much I can talk about high noon with people that I don't know, and so I was like, well, I know what'll really amp up this conversation if I talk about wanting to take a bath in the peach. So would you? Also drink the peach while in the peach? No, see, that is a thing. I, I did think about this after I had the conversation. It's such a wasteful move. Yeah. And also, like, it's probably not good to lay in that. No, yeah. no, no, no. What they should do. Hi, Noon, if you're listening, what's up, guys? Um, <laughs> there you go, Jack. Make sure you shout them out. Um, if I were you, I would set it up how Casey would lay in a bat like w full cans and it's oh. set up and then the cans cover like she can you can be cans. wearing a bra and stuff and like but it looks like you're naked oh. it's not Covering actually yeah. it's not actually the cans covering your cans yeah yeah and then jack from there <laughs> from there that's jack. actually a really good it idea could be, it, it, it could be it could be a you could put it on, like, you know, you could start putting in, I don't know if they advertise in magazines, but that, I know magazines are kind of out, but you could do it wherever. You yes. could do it Casey Smith Instagram and her post. cans for high noon. Yes. 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 Okay. Well, I mean, I've been doing that for a while. <laughs> Correct. Which leads me to the argument. No, you don't get to start the argument. Okay. I get to start. Okay, go ahead. I, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So once again, if you were listening earlier, uh, I, on the cold open. Yes. This is a delightful little uh, petty, childlike <laughs> argument that I am not involved in. And I am so happy. Katie, you're not involved in it either. No, not it's really. A, it's a family family fight between two people. I don't think I've ever had a family fight. Okay. All right. Yeah. You always. We've all now fought with each other. Oh, you and I haven't, but I don't think we ever will. Um, Katie, uh, at some point. I feel like all girls She will and fight, I didn't fight. No, Katie she and I. Didn't and I fight. Katie and I. She just. Oh, we fought comment. before, though. You and I have? Yeah. Remember the Notre Dame thing? You got really mad at me that day. Oh, yeah. Right? That's right. Well, that's but, but that was like. That, that was, was two years ago. Yeah. What Notre Dame thing? Because he said Notre, Notre Dame. Notre Dame. And then I, it was like, it was just like. I don't know y'all thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> we were bored. Yeah. Go I think it was just, but it was good drama. It was. All right. Go ahead, Brandon. Set this Dude, up. We've never fought. I mean, I've been right and you've been wrong. Okay. Oh, I'm not no. doing this. No. Okay. All right. <laughs> so. This man wants to get in the drama so bad. <laughs> <laughs> He's like jealous. I, he has yeah. FOMO. I almost guarantee you I'll, I'll be more involved in the drama yeah. in 15 minutes than you guys. For sure. All right. So Casey Smith was on a show called Barstool vs. America. Yes. It's a reality show pitting teams of four against each other. There were unique rules. They went all over the country. Great show. Came out to critical acclaim. It was fantastic. 13 uh, million views. Casey, uh, the, the, win the winning team, the winning four, got $40,000. Mm -hmm. And I assume that's $10,000 each. Yes. Got $10,000 each and the rights to a Jersey Shore house. For the entire month of July, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. And um, so you did not win. You were not I on the winning not. team. I did well, not. I, I was a sacrificial lamb so that Kelly Keys could win. When it ended, you you did not win. Uh, however, uh, members of the losing team, uh, as so capably blogged by Jack, I'm just going to read a tweet. Uh, quote, if you're on the losing team from Barcelona versus America, you can't be staying at the Jersey Shore house. I just want to protect the integrity of Barcelona versus America. Jack Mack, uh, our producer, wrote a blog detailing how guys like per people like Spider and Marty and Casey uh, were spending time at the Barstool Shore House days, nights at a time, even though they didn't win, thus compromising the very integrity mm -hmm. of what everybody watched. And Casey, you don't like that he wrote that blog. You think he can fuck right off. And Jack, you're protecting the integrity of this show. Uh, first of all, I didn't even see the blog yet. My qualms came with the video that I saw first because it was sent to me and I was the first. Now, maybe Viva fucked Jack over a little bit. I don't know. But the first name that he brought up was mine. He said, well, Casey Smith's been there for two weeks and went on this whole rampage about me, his I podcast co-host. right after. But it was like, first of all, I've spent 48 hours in this house. I did go there the first mm -hmm. weekend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was there on Thursday. I drove down Thursday, went to a high noon event, and was brought back to the city the same night. Yes. 
Here's the thing that was not said on the show, which I will give Jack a little bit of credit that it was not said on the show, but going into it, we were all told the entire month of July is sponsored by High Noon and we would be doing promotional events in which the contestants of Barcel versus America would need to be in attendance. Now, I'm not going to toot my own horn, but I'm all over High Noon commercials. I've been doing High Noon since day one of this thing. And MB said most of the places requested my presence to be at these events. So the first weekend was about making a splash at the Jersey Shore and then I left. I got up on Monday morning. I left. Everyone else stayed. I have not spent more time in that. But what I had qualms with was that Jack was just throwing me under the bus as if I've been living there the whole time. He's seen me in this office for two weeks. Jack, you've thrown uh, everybody on the podcast under the bus at one point. <laughs> what or is your stance on this? That could be a uh, producer's. I didn't know that. But again, that's not my i'm a viewer of the show mm -hmm. that's and, not within his scope casey and i the was house trying has to protect 14 and, beds and the house has 14 beds however if they're going to stay in the show and if high noon and other sponsors want to keep sponsoring these shows because i know that the show i'm not 100 percent sure i don't even know if i can say it but i know high noon paid a lot of money for this show mm -hmm. and it went great everyone did a great job including the producers however with the shore house i was told that was on the line on the first graphic that came out that everyone tweeted mm -hmm. forty thousand dollars in the shore house my only point was yeah okay it's a high noon month uh, you i'm sure barcel would have paid for a hotel motel um either or they're mostly motels down there for people to stay at or a car back if you wanted to return after the event what about if there's two I days said of events two back weeks. to back? If I hotel, said motel. Hotel, hotel, motel. Okay, okay. I said two weeks, which was wrong. Yeah. But kind of right because well, you no. may were you were only there for 48 hours, mm -hmm. but it was across two weeks or a week, two well, separate weekends. Casey, you freeloaded at the Jersey Shore house. That's what Jack's saying. Yeah, no, I, I understand that. So here's the thing is that I, um, when I'm I asked. I wouldn't say freeload. When I'm that's asked, not true. That's, that's what I heard. When I'm asked by our sales team, our people who put our sales in action, and then also the people who sponsor my entire life, which again I've laid in a beach chair in the green screen room for four hours in a bikini. Katie watched yep. it for high noon, not making a dime off of it. By the way, everybody know I'm not getting paid by high noon. And then they say, "Hey, we would love your presence if be at if you would be at these things." And I would like to say I've met a million amazing high noon reps, but at all of these events. I'm standing there talking to High Noon about Unnecessary Roughness, the college football show, the commercials that I do, and that's why I am there. The reason I was there for the first 48 hours is because they wanted everybody who was a part of the show to make a bang the first weekend, and then I got in a car, and I went home. Not that kind of bang, Brandon. She, wait, wait, wait. When did you... She's saying everybody had to bang at the Jersey Shore. Yeah, house. everybody when had to did you me. Did you stay at the, the house? Yeah. Okay, yeah. But, so high, that was noon, but high Noon got a house that has 14 beds in it. Yeah, then they shouldn't have put it in the show. But that, but my thing was, was that it was like you were acting as if. First of all, there's more people at that house that were not a part of the show that yeah, have that, nothing you, to do with and high you noon. Guys, you get, including not you specifically, but the other person here that I, it's over with with him. Oh yeah, you and Spider. Beef. Like they, he brought up right away the other people. I, I that wasn't my, and I understand that's a fair qualm too. And I didn't say you shouldn't have been there. I said the losers shouldn't have been able to stay at the house. Now, I get it. You had to be there. Casey. And I think if it, if Barstool didn't pay for a hotel motel for the losing team to stay at for the events you had to go to, that would have been ridiculous. And I think they would have. Well, Casey, my friend Jack is trying to protect the integrity of the show. That we well, I would, like to point out, I would like to point out that I did not get $10,000 and I would have loved to have $10,000. And all of a sudden, you know, if you watch the show, the only person that gave a fuck about the house over the money was Glenny Balls. And Glenny Balls was on the winning team and Glenny has had himself a time. Can I just say something? This is the worst fight ever. It's not a fight. Neither I just, one of no. you are yelling. At no. each well, 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 that's right because we all saw what happened yesterday. But I also didn't yell at you yesterday. No, I'm My saying like, like the was, fight if, happened yesterday and it was clear like if it who was, came out victorious. If it was who? Me. 
This that's just why. not true. That, I mean, that's why. if it was Barstool versus America sponsored by XYZ that has nothing to do with us, I'm not going to give any no, free ads. No, this isn't about you. I was saying about the other person. Oh. I'm not talking about you. But see, that was my problem, Jack, is that you were talking about me. I shouldn't have said your name <laughs> in you. the Viva La Stool video, and Thank I you. apologize I, for that. Oh, see, then there we go. That's all that matters. And, and this is why. And I don't <laughs> think, and I knew, and I knew even when you were tweeting, I mean, at first, after you saw the video. I knew you weren't going to be that mad at me because I didn't know why you were mad and I shouldn't have said your name in the Viva La Stool video. That was my mistake. See, this is why I am the heart and soul of this podcast. Because, <laughs> because, because, because when it comes time to fight, but he, when it comes but time to yell, we both see each other's side. I get people to storm out of this motherfucker. No, but, but here's the thing. We see each other's side because I do see what Jack is saying. However, when I originally saw the video, I was like, yes. why the fuck am I getting thrown under the bus as if I'm doing something wrong when I've been yeah. asked to be down there by yeah. not only Barcel Sports, but also High Noon Sun Sips, which yeah. is real vodka, real juice for real fans just like us. And I will say that I 100% agree with that. And you're like, who knows if this podcast would have been sponsored <laughs> if you weren't you, on Jack. this spot. Uh, it would have been sponsored. Brandon. Brandon's so <laughs> mad. Not, <laughs> maybe, is not about Maybe this. not by high noon. <laughs> maybe not by high noon. High noon likes Casey. And that's because Casey does a great job Thank promoting you, high noon. However, I will say there was nothing really the the like it was never gonna be a big blowout fight between Casey and I. The big blowout fight was Spider. between spy like we saw it happen yesterday. And um I don't really have like I think probably people are probably over it at this point for, for, between me and Casey and I. I think it's probably good to move on unless you want to yell at me now that I said. Well, that I will point out something. I will here. point out something though, Jack, is that you said that Dana's a man of integrity. The reason Dana's not at that house is because he hates Vibs. Oh yeah, he's that not was going a joke. to the house. That was right. a joke that I said. Right. Like, Dana's back. Like he, that was just like a Dana wants nothing to do with the vibs also he probably is trying to stay a little bit low right now after the whole Marina scumbag wedding, yeah, Mary yeah, wedding yeah, thing. Yeah. brandon's so mad right now that we didn't actually get in a fight don't we have to put this even in the show we can i can cut it up and no. just like, fine, whatever no it needs to be i mean we we talked it out like adults we both saw each, i mean the amount when of people we that start are, doing that well i don't know a lot of people are on jack's side telling me to stop crying like a bitch a lot of people yeah, are, no, but I even said one of the persons was like, oh, you stopped trying uh, like like with your uh, dressing in the office. I saw that. Thing and then I responded. I was like, Casey may be mad, but like if you think people come to the office like it's the runway. I mean, I'm wearing massive slippers today. Yeah, you you are particularly ridiculous today. Well, see, here's the thing. We were walking into the studio. I looked down. And I was like, come on. She so likes those. I love them. these. And to bring it all together, these got super popular from what show? Barstool versus America? No. The Jersey Shore. Because Snooki used to oh, wear hat. Yeah. Now, not these specific ones, but the we made Barstool versions of these Snooki slippers. It is college football. <laughs> That's what we talk about here. I'll step in well, and save the show. Ew. Save the show? Save the show. It's the f First of all, it's the off season. Second of all, are you going to weigh in on who you think was right? No. Well. 100% no. I don't think we're pretty much on the same side, you and I. No, no. One of you was wrong. One of you was right. Well, you're going to have to say it now. No, I don't. He doesn't have to. I think it's better to just go on to the show. College football. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. We got we got High Noon more. How many more times was High Noon set? Because oh, and it. I tagged him and everything, too. Yes. I'm sure they were super happy about that. Yes, it I was, was like, perfect. sorry, it I won't be at any more stuff. events because my producer yeah, won't let me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> It was great for High Noon, too. You, you, I went on serious, and I was like, oh, he, all he does is press record. I'm just kidding. He does all this stuff. And then you just saw a clip of me saying, I just, just press record, and then you just ruined my reputation with producers for the rest of my life. And you, you ran up out of here because I locked the door, and you, you got all freaked out, and y'all can't freak out on each other? Yeah, but he didn't insult me. <sighs> you insulted also, me. You said you, you were going to take somebody over me after that. You did. And, Brandon, did. when I you slammed did. the door, you the personally quote. insulted me. I will say I have – been deeped surrounding you and our relationship and that was something that i shouldn't have done however i was more mad that you picked somebody over me but we don't and, have to go back and, to last year and you personally insulted me this is all of a sudden turned into a jack and casey verse <laughs> it's brand new. well uh, something's got to be done here hey man you might have to get in a fight just to just to give the people something bring it bitch let's go well, shut okay. up katie i will you say i asked katie whose side she was on and she said she sees both sides and i was like well i, I told katie 
you she can take your side because I thought it was more beneficial for just her to ride with you. My my issue just the other people who went there when we had our bosses asking us for help with with Barstool versus or Barstool athletes and they went out partying. So I'm, I'm just jealous. But I also said that in the in the blog that yeah maybe I'm a little jealous. I mean, it's open to the, all of Barstool. No, I know, I know, I know. No. There are 14 beds there. I feel like you have to get a specific invite from someone on right. Barstool versus America. You can't like just show up. If I just got up. my minivan and I grab, <laughs> I grab fucking Nate and Big Ev and, my, and, my, and, just, and, nope. and a bunch of other people. Big Ev was there, people. the one. Okay, whatever. I'm just saying You're random just people. you throwing people under the bus? I'm just doing people that sit near me. If yeah. I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah no, you if need we a, just showed up, it's all good? You need a specific I don't know. If me, hey, Mitch, hey, Playboy listen, Marty, and Nate showed up, it's all good. Hey, listen, listen. Travis Scott for the boys. Listen, listen. It's not my house, so it's not my rules. All right, college football. <laughs> I can I will say this though. Jesus Christ. The winners do get to pick their rooms. If that matters. Oh, what? So the the, the punishment for a loser is, is sleeping in a room you didn't pick. Well, but some rooms have like four beds in them. Some. I mean, yeah, I heard like Vibs was very so nice Voyers. and slept on the bunk beds with Spider. But that was Vibs offered that. That yeah. wasn't. And but the thing with Spider and I, if anyone would watch that too, that's like it's over with. The Ford and Pussy Patrol is together. Li- I on my tie end for sure. Like I'm ready. Ooh, like I, 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 I know. but I under. But we'll see. Okay. How come Jeff D. Lowe didn't catch any smoke? I will. Burn he was the host. This building to the ground. Okay, don't burn it to the ground. I love Jeff D. Lowe. All right, we don't have to talk about it anymore. We hashed it out, probably for too long, but it's the off season. College football is coming up. It is coming on. We're within uh, we're within 49 days. I think we're actually we're about 44 days to to week one. About yes, or less than that to week. Really? Zero. Yeah. I thought it was like 50 something. No, it's no. It, no, the last Saturday was 49 days. It was seven weeks. <sighs> yeah. Wow. Big T. If you ever want to see Big T's rock, the Tennessee rock. Yeah. Um. Every day he updates it. Yesterday was 45, and I was like, Why yeah, is? Where does he have a rock? Why is Those Why desks. is Big T honoring Trump? And then I was like, Oh, 45 <laughs> days until because think, Trump was 45. You think Big T doesn't honor Trump? No, but, but I, mean, like, <laughs> wait, I wait. don't want to talk about anybody's politics, but I was just like saying, like, I, I was like, that was weird. But now this it's 44. on his desk? Like a rocky top. It's like a rocky like top. I've never seen this. It's small. You will we'll walk like by it. I like it now. It. Yeah. I like it. Rocky top. You'll always you guys did like a yak version of it, right? I wish Tennessee would. Uh, I wasn't here. You weren't there. You were driving. Yeah, I was driving from Mississippi. Uh, so we got a lot to talk about. We got the horns down fiasco to talk about. We have... Uh, I want to talk about old Kyle Umling and his Blue Bloods uh, yeah, yeah, that was methodology. I'd that. like to talk, and you don't have I, to talk about that because I, I, I just I muted just, him, so I don't know. He comes. He came out with a graphic saying, uh, uh, with a bunch of criteria, saying if you meet these criteria, you're a true Blue Blood. And it was clearly weighted so he could get Texas in there. It was absolutely weighted so he could get Texas in there. Uh, anyway. <laughs> um, he said there's eight Blue Bloods. It's uh, Ohio State, Notre Dame, These Alabama. teams have won 54% of the AP National Championships and have been ranked during 70 what percent of 70. the AP poll era. Yeah. And then he talks uh, even further. If we could – could you zoom in, Katie? Well, that's all. We don't want to talk about right now. I'm just okay. setting up what we're going to talk about. Uh, uh, we also have uh, SEC Media Day, some things out there that I thought was interesting. Is the Rose Bowl going to hold up the college football playoff expansion? Oh, I'm going to rant on that. Um, well, that what? what? No, like, I agree. Like, that's just disgusting. I'm going to rant on that. Yes. Uh, Classic and then we, we'll California. have uh, and Dion's in the news. Dion, Dion, actually, we can start with Dion. We'll also have my road trip, my alternate road trip. Oh road yeah. Road trip. By the way, can I can I point out how many people thought that we were actually taking that road trip and yes. being like, yeah. do you know how bad this travel is? Like, this isn't a road trip. You have to get on an airplane. It's guys, guys, it's a hypothetical. Yeah. We're just having a we good time. We should have said in the caption, hypothetical, but we, it, that, that, let's go take that a graphic of, did. Let's go take a picture of a used Honda Accord. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's, all, uh, let's all stand outside a used Honda Accord saying, all right, well, come well, on Well, here we go. Imagine if if you want to see fights, yeah. put us all for an Honda Accord oh, for three no, months. We would hate let's each just, other. Let, uh, here we go. <laughs> we go to a used car lot. We take a picture in front of a used uh, Honda Accord. And then Unless every Honda week, every week we uh, we Photoshop the the whatever yes. school there's behind us. Oh my god! In the exact same so picture, funny. and then we can own. write fan fiction of like Casey got mad at Jack because Jack right. was supposed to get food for the Casey. The Jack, Jack went to the gas station to get uh to, to get candy and he didn't bring back a payday for Casey. Yeah, she said uh, if you don't bring back payday, you can't ride in the front seat. And yeah, shit went crazy. Yeah, no, it, it, people are people would love that. We got to go take that picture. We got to do, do it. We got to do it. 
And uh, also, we would be remiss to point out that Katie doesn't know where Dallas, Texas is. No offense. Yeah, no. Oh, I yeah. I that graphic did up. do numbers, though, didn't it? It did. It did. Also, yeah, that's, it was that's all, all she was off by a half inch. Well, no, but no, like, no, no, no. What? Stop. No, stop. That's stop. Like stop. Three o'clock to noon. Uh, like, hey, that's a Katie, I, I, I just want to step in for you here. Katie does a graphic. She does all of our graphics. She, she, well, not all of them. You probably do some, but she does. No, she like does a. She does all. She did that one. That was great. They're all great. They were great. But the fact that she put out a graphic of. 13 weeks of travel and say week one here, week three there, week four there. And then uh, the, the Oklahoma Texas game was slightly askew from, from to the southwest. An eighth of an inch. No, 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 no. An eighth of an inch off. And every reply was, oh, this fucking idiot. Is, oh, you, Texas, and Dallas. <laughs> How do you not know where uh, like, like, Dallas is? Like, we didn't know it was played away? in. We didn't know it was played in San Antonio. Who uh, knew? Uh, Austin's like, two hours away. And and I know what she did. She was building the graphic, yeah. right? And, and she was going by the last team, X at X. Yeah, we talked talk, talk so long about Austin. It was in my head. No, she, yeah, yeah. yeah. At least she didn't put it in Oklahoma. Pilot. It was Oklahoma yeah, versus Texas. True, and she point. put it in, in Austin because Texas was the last thing on the graphic. Yeah. And, and it made sense. And, and People lost their mind. Like, oh my God, I can't believe it's not in Dallas, you idiots. This shows what you don't know about college football. Suck my fucking dick. For that sure. It was a great grab. So dumb. So oh, dumb. I mean, it did phenomenally well on every platform, especially yeah. Yeah. Instagram. I might people as well loved it. Keep making small mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I have not made a perfect graphic. Well, you so graphic. But, 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 but you, on some of your graphics, you make you, you make mistakes yeah, take on purpose. The, Katie, take yes. it off. Oh, so, yes, because absolutely. Because Casey's getting very interested by it. Yeah, she's she's found the, the Texas A and M logos, and she's wondering what yeah. where, where they are. So <laughs> what, what? She's pissed. Okay, we'll keep do, going. We'll do horns down uh, in a minute too. Um, what else we got? We got some other the over unders. No, oh yeah, that's what that's what I was. We yeah, got that's over-unders. the main thing. But we're doing for um, two conferences a week. News. What we're doing them for two conferences a week. Yeah, we're gonna do ACC and Big Twelve over unders. We thought we'd bring our top five, but we're just gonna go through every every team yeah. in the ACC and Big Twelve this week. And their their total on the Barstool Sportsbook app. Yes. We will say yes, we like it, we hate it. Yes. Or over under, push whatever we want to say. Really. Oh, we can push. All right, we say whatever we want. It's our show. We can say whatever the fuck we want. Yeah, uh, we can. We can say the shore house. We want just us four. <laughs> oh yeah, we can even. <laughs> no, we can. Um, we can. I'm um, gonna say push for any team at six and a half wins because they're giving out half wins this year, like the Jersey Shore House. <laughs> It wasn't bad. It took a while. I should have. It took I a took, while to It get took there. too long, and yeah. I should have saved it for the total. Yeah. Jack, when I don't we feel like home. I win whenever I didn't get ten thousand dollars. <laughs> just, it just work on the getting there a little quicker. You're right. I, positive I, vibes you, only. I've Jack. never said that I'm perfect, and you, that's something Jack, I need. I need to go quicker. You faded that one, and Pos- you should have just drawn it in there. You just went. You kind of lobbed thing. it too high. Yeah. You know. Uh, okay. Positive vibes only. I agree. No, I agree. Uh, where do I want to start? Because we will get to the over. Let's start with Dion. Let's start with Dion. Let's start with Dion because that just happened. So Dion Sanders is in the in the old news. Dion Sanders, and, and I know I, I have an opinion on what he did, but I, I, I do think there's an element. Let me just tell you what he did. So today at Jackson State SWAC Media Days. It was a SWAC Media Days, yeah. Uh, a reporter from the Clarion Ledger, I believe, was asking him a question, mm-hmm. called him Dion. Hey, Dion. What do you think of your defense this year? And Deion Sanders, Barstool employee Deion Sanders, uh, NFL Hall of Famer Deion Sanders. Casey Ever, Smith's co-host Deion Everybody Sanders. knows Deion Sanders. Subway spokesperson. Deion Sanders storms out. And then he's he's reached and Somebody asked him, why are you storming out? Uh, he says, because they call me Deion. You wouldn't just call – Nick Saban will cuss you out if you call him Nick. Something like that. I don't have the, the exact quote, but that's pretty much what he said, right? Do you have the exact said, right? quote, Katie? I'll get it. I can look it up. So, yeah, get, somebody get that for me. But that's what Dion said. And um, I believe Dion is spectacularly wrong here, <laughs> crazy wrong. However, I feel relatively certain. I don't know him on a personal level. I feel certain he knows what he's doing. What he's doing. Yes. So I, I, I know do know him. He's doing. I do know him on a personal level, uh, obviously, the from the show. But also – if you think about the SWAC Media Days, right. are there going to be any headlines from the SWAC Media Days while the SEC Media Days are going on? Well, I think there w- there will be because of Deion Sanders. Well, so, yeah, right. That's, exactly that's what I'm saying. Also, he just, before he stormed out, he did a minute and 50 rant about why don't, why don't 
why doesn't the media give HBCU football more coverage? So I'm sure him storming out. Then if you search Deion Sanders on Twitter right now, yeah. he then uh, there there's a two minute clip about why doesn't the media give us more coverage? So I think he is kind of doing moving it. the chess pieces around the board. Yeah, he's moving. Yeah, and he's not. He's probably not even mad. I would assume he's not. He said, you don't call Nick Saban Nick, don't call me Dion. If you call Nick Nick, you'll get cussed out on the spot. So don't do that to me. Treat me like Nick. Okay, here's the thing. I have uh, I was a SEC sports writer, went to Media Days many I went times, to media days and many I, times I covered too. many, many coaches. Um, coach reporters call Nick Nick all the time. All the time. Every time and whenever we covered Mr. State Dan Mullen, they called him Dan. Reporters call coaches by their first names because reporters and and coaches are no better than reporters. Coaches are not better than reporters. They're they're the same. They're they're, they're equals. I I think that every time I've addressed a coach, I just always say coach. I I think I did like too. My, I, that's my and not because I'm trying to like not get in trouble, but I think like the go to and like a, a, maybe it's different from like a newspaper standpoint than from a sideline standpoint. But every sideline interview I did, it was coach. Not even not Coach Saban, yeah. not Coach Sanders. It was always coach. Fair enough, fair enough. But I I, I think. Um, you know, calling them by their first name. I, I mean, can but you? But can you imagine if, like, you know, Laura Rutledge, shout out her, heard of her, like, was on the sidelines and it was like, "Hey, Nick, what were your adjustments and at halftime?" Cussed her out. I mean, you, well, you wouldn't cuss her out, well, but like, you if would, he did, he would get roast. Well, think I about mean, what happened with Maria Taylor. Yeah. But like, I, I've never seen like a sideline reporter say call them by their first names in that situation. No, most of them are really professional. I just say, "Hey, coach," you, said like, it. "Hey, coach," our coach, yeah. You know, so I yeah, do, but again, I, if, if 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 you if you said, "Hey, Nick," I don't think you're getting anything. I, any like feet. that, you know what? That like, and maybe again, it's two different types of of journalism. But like that, you just saying if I me so if I said, "Hey, Nick," like I just had a shiver up my spine of the look that he would give into my soul if I said that. I don't know. Diff- but I I do think it's different in game than at a press conference. I but do think that. Some guys say that he's called. He worked with Nick Saban for a long time. And he's said that Dion's wrong because yes, a lot of he's people are worked, saying that. He's worked with Dion or with Nick Saban and called Nick Saban Nick at press I think, conferences for before. Sure. I think Dion is wrong. I think Dion woke up this morning uh, and decided he was going to um, move the needle. Move the needle. And and Play Dion chess. knows how to move the needle more than anybody in, in probably sports in the last thirty or forty years. Dion Got, you know, that, that HBCU rant you talked about? I mean, yeah. I guarantee I you eyeballs to are going to get – eyeballs and ears are going to get to that rant now that wouldn't have got to yeah. it otherwise. So Again, but, there's but, nothing worse than apathy. But I'm if telling you, nobody's going to be apathetic I mean, being fair, even though he's a coworker, um, the actual saying, call me Dion or call me coach or don't call me Dion, that's ridiculous. Yeah, no, I – I would agree with that from a, a press conference standpoint, for sure. I've I've been at SEC media days. I've been at Big 12 media days. I know that that happens. I guess I just still cringe at thinking that I would do that. But I'm again, I'm coming from a, a TV broadcast instead of in a media room when you're it's hundreds of media members and you're just asking questions. It is a different vibe. Uh, but I don't think Dion actually thinks. No, I don't think what he does he's, either. I think um, he's. Yeah. Very good at what he does. Yeah. So um, there's media days elsewhere. Nick Saban kind of made some headlines today at uh, SEC media days when uh, he finally admitted for the first time in years that Alabama's quarterback probably makes seven figures a year. But anyway, he said he was asked about, you know, what's an NIL, name, image, likeness, what's it done? And he said, our quarterback has already approached ungodly numbers. It's almost seven figures. So we're talking about a quarterback who's never played a meaningful snap of college football is already so recognizable in Alabama he is making almost a million dollars. I mean, he's just saying what we already all knew. But my question is this. Mm -hmm. Is he moving the needle? Is Nick Saban playing the game? Because Nick Saban being the coach that stands up there in front of media days and says, our quarterback, he's made about a million dollars. Excuse me, I'm going to call a five-star from California. But would it be weird to think <laughs> that Bryce Young has already made almost a million dollars to play for Alabama? No, because if there is a uh, an organization of boosters out there or friends of the program <laughs> or people in the state that was ready for this mm-hmm. and that will absolutely dive in head first, Alabama, the people in the state of Alabama around that program are going to go above and beyond everybody else. 
they find out the uh, LSU quarterback's making 500K, if they find out he's making 250K, then Bryce Young is going to be put on a pedestal. Alabama fans and, and the people in that state are – will be the ones they will go stop at any cost they will stop at no cost excuse me to be the best in this game it's going to be a competition of people the richest people the richest people to to give the best benefits right and that's where you know you talk about the the blue blood programs and i know we're going to get to that but i honestly believe that that's going to change i mean granted you're always going to have the names of college football right you're going to know the, the ohio state's the Texas, the Alabamas, the Clemsons. But once you really start getting the rich people involved, these programs are going to start to look a little bit stop, different. Stop. Once you start getting the rich people publicly Publicly involved, involved yes. yes. To where, like, you know, like in, in at Oklahoma State, what was his name? T. Boone Pickens. Didn't, did he pass away? Yeah. Oh, he he's dead. dead. He's, he was he's, be, he's yeah. dead, dead, right? Yeah. Okay. Not R- dead, dead. R- like a, two years or so. He's dead. Okay, R- R.I.P., R.I.P. He was can very you, old, lived a very good you, life. Can you imagine if he could have publicly been giving Oklahoma State players money? Yeah. I mean, that would be insanity. You look at, like, the, the, the amount of money coming out of the state of Texas with oil. You look across. I mean, just now that it's a public thing you can do, these programs are going to start to look a little bit different. By the way, Booster Club. Booster Club? Yeah. That's the name. What did I say? No, no, no. Over the podcast. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Y'all don't like it? No. I don't hate it. I don't hate it, but I like ours better. You like unnecessary reference better? Yeah, we had a conversation before we started recording about how the first episode that Brandon and I were kind of like, do we like unnecessary roughness? And I said, I'm really glad we chose that. And you said you still aren't sure. And I was like, well, we're in year three, so you can't change it. Yeah, I still don't love the name. I love it. I I like it. I thought of Booster Club one day. I thought that was really good. It It makes it sound like we're like. um, We're paying players. Well, I, well, I would love to pay players. My dream is to get rich enough yes. to just pay yeah, some Mississippi State players. For some reason, Booster Club sounds like a book club to me. Are you scared of reading? What do I feel like no, we have soccer moms on a Sunday. Yeah, yeah Booster Club. You know what Booster Club kind of Booster Club, is, is Booster Club we, could have, we probably could have done like, and then called our fans the Boosters. Yeah. Boosters? Yeah, I'm a Booster. He just uh, got a but, southern accent. Did yeah, you hear he, that? Yeah. But, but also. <laughs> Jack, you just twanged the fuck no, out of that. No, but it's actually good that we don't have boosters are in the news big time right now and if we got associated with yeah you don't you don't want that i think that'd be great no it wouldn't because there's a lot of bad connotations with the word booster right now no No one wants to take the booster i people do but i'm just saying like in terms of like oh i have to take another one oh that like with vaccines and boost then people could yeah no you lie about vaccine Jack's boosters? Big brain. I thought yeah. you meant booster as in like an actual booster, not the vaccine this booster. This is his militia side. <laughs> no, I'm just saying people can negatively connotate our yeah. show and then not get us listeners. I like unnecessary roughness. Me I'll too. Say it. Yeah. Roughnecks is good too. And we get to make unnecessary jokes every week. We've been doing that completely by accident, but we're taking full credit that we're not by accident. We're we gonna get a designer to do the logo the do the thing I thought about. Yeah. The the U R in the shape of every By the photo. way, if you're listening and you haven't seen the horns down uh shirts that we put out, um they were awesome. The f- and they're amount- in colors for the amount of the colors for most of the schools they most play. schools that hate Texas. Here's my problem with that. Is that and listen? I'll take you know maybe it's it's pulling a, a play out of Dion and Nick's. I'm gonna just say Nick now for the rest of the podcast uh, playbook. Every time anything negative about Texas comes out, I get fucking throttled as if I'm the one that's yeah. doing it. I'm pulling all the strings. The amount of first of all, I say this every time. The video from 2019 when we were in Minnesota and I was on Barstool Radio with Dave, one. Dan, and I, I guess Kevin, whoever else was on I that think show. Liz was on that oh, show too. No, that was that was that a was Super Bowl. Riggs. Riggs, that's right. It was Riggs. This was for the Final Four of basketball. Yes. And Dave asked about A and M Texas, whatever. It is from two and a half years ago, and you would think that these people, it's the only thing that they have watched. And what I said in the video is true. I said that A and M was making more money than Texas, which at the point was true. Now overall, obviously, absolutely not. But what's insane to me is that I compliment Texas on this podcast constantly and the amount of people that tweet me that video like oh you fucking moron it's like this is two and a half years old like find a new slant and it, it's every time these shirts come out and the videos back in my mentions and i just get throttled like I oh you that. cunt you idiot and i'm like i mean it's hard to see yeah because that's, yeah. that's what they call no, they me. call her they call her that i see it they it's call me crazy, crazy. Oh, yeah, but when i call you that it's a problem well well 
even for everyone listening, Brandon has never called me that. It is insane. And so then it's like this broad. There was that time we cut it out. Don't tell her. <laughs> This broad knows nothing, and then they and I'll like just send every once in a while I'll play it, and I'll just send like the Forbes article from 2019, and they're like, "Oh, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State argument." And I'm like, I don't give a shit. You know how long two and a half years ago was? We've been through a fucking global pandemic since then. I don't care about this video, but they've all got it bookmarked. That's all they want to talk about. Brandon, you know what I've I've been doing recently? Oh yeah, staying strapped with my taser. Uh, oh, your taser. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. I thought we were having a different conversation. Yeah, no, not a. Di- I mean, I know Katie's eyebrows kind of kind of mm-hmm. lifted a little bit, a little but bit. no, I I've been carrying my strike light taser in oh, my purse because yes, yes. you know the world's been reopening. Mm-hmm. It's getting a little crazy in New York City, so I just feel much safer carrying that strike light because I just keep it on at night, and so like I'll kind of swing it back and forth, and so people see that I have it, and if they get too close, I, I am so glad that you have decided to do this particular advertisement without the strike light because it is so effective that every time you you put it up and point at me, I freak out a little bit. Yeah, no, it's a very loud taser, and it is – the reason I love it so much is because, like, the light itself scares people. So I was walking home from the bar the other night, and it was just a couple blocks, but I was swinging it, and somebody was like, oh, hey, your flashlight on your phone's on, and I just hit the sound. Nobody said a fucking word to me for the rest of the time. Taser is fantastic, and the good news is, is that it's it's not it's not as harsh as having other types of protection. A lot of people are kind of unsafe having maybe guns in your house. The Taser Strike Light is a safe way to keep your family safe or your individual. My dad loves that I carry one. He got one for my sister. Got one for my mom. You can keep it in your car, and you don't need a permit in most states, Brandon. Oh yeah, and it scares the piss out of me. Well, it does. Well, I've never actually tased you with it. We should do that. Uh. No, no. Well, like if he acts up, fair. But it's a non-lethal self-protection device. It's small and lightweight. Like I said, I carry it in my purse everywhere I go. It does have the stun feature if you actually need to use it. But the strike light is so powerful that it will get you home safely. So right now, if you go to Taser.com and you use the promo code Walker, yes, that's my name. You can get fifteen percent off. Think of creepy dudes that you want to protect yourself from. Think Brandon Walker. Walker. That's Taser.com with the promo code Walker. 15% off. Again, that's T-A-S-E-R. That's with an S. T-A-S-E-R.com. Promo code Walker. Restrictions do apply. See the site for details. Yep. Speaking of horns down, so that was in the news last week uh, at Big 12 Media Days. Right. When uh, Bill, Bob Bowles, Bills, Bowles, 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 Bowlesby. Bowlesby. Bowlesby guy. Um, oh, it's Greg Burks. Why did I come up with Bowlesby? What did because he he's the Big 12 yeah, yeah. commissioner. Big 12 coordinator of officials Greg Burks, this was last week, said that if an opposing player does a horns down message to a Texas player, that would probably be a penalty. But doing a horns down towards your fans probably won't be a penalty, although he left open the possibility that it could be. Okay. Softest so, move of all time. Here's the thing. Much like I am not going to shit on Texas for this. I'm going to shit on the Big 12. Yes. Yeah. Much like when when – uh, something happens and you just get all kind of, kinds of hell from Texas fans even though you had nothing to do with it. I feel like Texas had nothing to do with this. Mm, false. Tom Herman and yes, last Tom year Herman. Sam Ellinger said some things about don't do horns down and all that shit. But they show up at media days, right? I, Texas doesn't bring this up. And they're talking to the, the head of officials and he's like, oh, horns down. It'll be a penalty if you do it right at somebody. It is the softest thing in the world, that idea that players can't take horns down in their face. It is very, very soft. And I've always said, just like old Mrs. Landshark, we've gotten penalized for doing it before after we sack them. If one team can do that hand signal, then they can take it done back at them uh, to taunt them. I'm sorry, they just can. One team should be able to do Anyway, I don't think it's Texas, though. It's not Texas. It's the Big 12 who will do anything in the world <laughs> to slob on the knob of the Longhorns. Court and that's not, Tex- that's not Texas's <laughs> fault. That's Check Texas. Texas me. runs that conference. They run They run Iowa mm-hmm. State. They run Oklahoma. They run Baylor. They run everybody. And Oklahoma fans, you can sit here and say, no, us and Texas run it. No, you don't. Texas runs that conference. Texas runs the conference, and decisions at this level are made in the name of Texas. And not Texas's fault. They are the, the money, the, the, the big money. And that's why it's hard sometimes to take Texas seriously because they are a big fish in a pond where, like, that fish is taken care of. It's fed. It's it's absolutely coddled. it's coddled. Yeah, nobody's fishing. They they have no danger. There's no they're predators in like bubble out there. wrap. They're absolutely they're they're in a they're like a, a ten pound bass in a koi pond. Mm-hmm. They're just mm-hmm. absolutely uh, protected. And Texas fans don't see it, but you are. And see, uh, I think that the rational Texas fans do see it. I really do. Now again, 
I, Twitter fandom is never rational. No chance. But, like, I even had some Texas fans saying, like, as a fan of this school, as a Longhorn, I these people are being super soft. Because I do feel like the idea of being able to do horns down – is like a rite of passage for anybody just like doing anything else. And if that offends you, then you're just a soft person. Like yeah. now I, I will say like the horns up, like the, the long horn horns up hand signal is the, probably the coolest one in sports. You hear that Texas fans? I'm giving you a compliment, I'm giving you a compliment. This is probably the coolest one. I will like, I, I know Texas tech has the, the, you know, guns up A&M's gig em. It's not as cool looking. But if anybody did a thumbs down in my face, I could not be less offended. Who gives a shit? It's a thumbs down. It's not like they gave you the middle finger. So it's like, why would you care if your hand signal is upside down? Well, if you do a hand signal, it's going to get thrown back in your face. It's right. I don't understand. Yeah. The, like the, the, yeah. the U is another good oh, one. Oh, well, how, how many times has an opposing. Oh, I have a chat throughout and gif of him doing the U to his dick. Like yeah. A, how many, how like, many who times cares? A player, has a player against Florida scored a touchdown and then mockingly did right. the, uh, like, the I, jump? Right. Like, I don't understand that. Like, as a as a football fan, that's like the, the kind of shit that you live for to have that moment. If I was a player and By I was way, playing the, Florida and I sacked like Tim Tebow, you better bet I'm fucking chomping the, in his the face. The chomp is way cooler than, than Horns Up. You think? See, I think that this, like, like, when everybody in the stadium is like, as my bra showing, is that anybody in the stadium is like this? I think that looks really cool. I, it's yeah. the it's the in sync thing that I don't yeah. like. You know, if like everybody was but doing. You love I like Backstreet Boys better. No, you don't. Yes, I do. I've I, always liked the Backstreet Boys better. What the fellas? I saw you as a new girlfriend of Mamie Jones. But see, here's the thing: if everybody was in sync doing that, I would feel differently. But it's all good. Because I'm glad that we're I'm gonna get kicked off of YouTube. Don't tell anybody. But everybody, like, if you look at like a game and everybody's doing the horns up. What? You like Backstreet more than Sync? I do. Sync and Justin Timberlake. Well, okay. Backstreet if had a bunch of old guys. If we're at first of all, they were all like the same age. Second of all, if we're talking about how he like worked at the gas station, individual people, then yes, obviously JT is higher. But as a band, when I was younger, also I'm ten years they younger than you. They didn't have anything as good as Bye Bye Bye, they or have, it's gonna they be have me. Double the streams of Sync. I don't care. There's a lot of stupid people out there in the world. I mean, just by simple numbers, they have double the streams of NSYNC. Because Justin Timberlake was all NSYNC had. Oh, J.C. Chazé was a delight. Well, I mean, Justin... <laughs> Joey Fatone? Just, I mean, listen, I love Justin Timberlake. I am not knocking him. But as a, as a young preteen girl, I loved Nick Carter and I loved the Backstreet Boys. And listen, can I give you this? This is where we're going to meet in the Timberlake middle. Justin Timberlake was cuter this, than Nick Carter. Not at the time. This is where I'll meet you in the middle, Okay. Justin Timberlake, by far the most talented of all boy bands of all time. Like, he was. When it comes to boy bands as a whole, all of them, Backstreet Boys was better. It's just a fact. But Harry Styles, right? Well, I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm talking. Stop, stop, stop. I mean, Harry Styles. One of these punk-ass kid. kids today can measure up to NSYNC and Backstreet I mean, Harry Styles is, like, Harry. one of the biggest celebs in the world right yeah. now i'd say also like i, but I one one direction that. like i feel like i'm that was like right after my boy band phase i have uh, i have reached yeah you were probably you're, you're probably in college i have reached the I age think. where i no longer probably like a know certain pop culture things you like don't? i have never heard a harry styles song yes you, you probably have, yeah, you have. You have. You don't well, okay i'm not aware that i've heard of harry styles have song. you ever heard watermelon sugar high certainly not yes you have well, that I sounds can't, like it sounds like my sophomore year of college well, you don't like watermelon, so I hate watermelon. I, that is I can't, true. I, I didn't can't get high play, either. I can't play it for you because yeah, we sugar. cannot play it. But I, I will afterwards. You can't even. It's not even YouTube anymore. You can't even play. Sugar's delicious. Play it in podcast. Speaking of being high, it's funny because he doesn't even know the reference. I know. Yeah, well, Aww. no, most people. Sugar's didn't. delicious. What? I really? Yeah. What? Watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> He's horrified right I now. I never encountered one that tasted like any of those things. Yeah, I'm over that. What? Over what? Pussy. <laughs> Should we talk football? You, did you, are you making an announcement right now? No. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I meant the specific act. Oh, I see. Oh, uh, we oh. all we all are, bro. No, w- excuse me. No, we are not. This is. Can we talk football? Wow, coming from Katie. I mean, you're the one. That, you bring this up just on a normal Tuesday. I brought it up, sure, but then you took it. You ran with it. Uh, victim blaming. <laughs> <laughs> Is that guy You asked for it. Uh, by me? Me. Yeah. 
You just awesome. gaslit him. Yeah, sweet. You did. I love gaslighting. <laughs> we were talking about gaslighting earlier. Have and you ever heard the original form of gaslighting? No, but I, I want to get back to the football real quick. Okay. I messed up. The, that horns down thing last week, a very prototypical, classic summer only story. Yeah. Yes. That's an off season story. Absolutely. Otherwise, that is not, it wasn't not a big true. deal. What? Not true. Because at, you remember how seriously they took it after the West Virginia game when um, Greer threw the ball to, I think it, who, I think it was Greg Jennings who caught it. Um, not Greg Jennings. Who was the Jennings that caught, played wide receiver? Was it Greg Jennings? I don't remember. It was uh, whoever. They beat – and uh, Greer went like this during the game, and then so did after that big pass. That was an awesome game. And then there was a big deal before the Oklahoma game, I think, in 2019. And there was also a big deal before the Big 12 championship game. Mm-hmm. So it was ha- this happened during the – The Big 12 championship the, yeah. game was a big story. Yeah, it was a big story. But, I mean, Tom Herman cried about it. So it, and I, so did Sam Ellinger. I, did you see Herman her? doesn't work for Texas? Anymore. Well, no, but I, well, I will say like he like yes, it's the Big 12's fault, and like Texas fans who are rational probably think this is the softest thing ever. But like it's not like the Big 12 just sat down and like mm, are they offended by it? Like Tom Herman was cr- like crying. So did your boy? Who's Mac? My boy? Mac cried about oh. it. Oh, really? Yeah, back in 2012, he did. And then I feel like texting him Tom about Herman it. did <laughs> Sam Ellinger and then Texas fans gaslight us saying no one at Texas cares. Are you kidding? Well, it is like the vocal minority, too, I think, because like I said, my friends who are rational, who are Texas fans are like, I don't give a motherfucker no. if you put the horns. Sam down. Ellinger, Mac Brown and uh, Mac Brown and then Tom Herman are not vocal minorities. I would say vocal majority. Yeah, they're not black. Oh. No, 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 no. They all those are three white guys. Yeah. But I, I meant like I they're big people in y- Texas. Oh, I yes, see. but I'm saying like I don't think that they represent the majority of Texas fans when it comes okay. to that. That's fair. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, I, I that, think if that you pulled yeah. the the hundreds of thousands of Texas fans, let me tell you, the majority thing. wouldn't give a fuck. Let me tell you one thing. Fine, you can say that. If Sark came out tomorrow and said we hate the horns down, ninety percent of Texas fans would say, fuck yeah, tell them Sark, tell them. Yeah, that's what they would do. Just like when Herman did it, they backed him, and then as soon as as soon as Herman's gone, oh, we never. That's I'll just tell Tom you, Herman. By the I'll way, tell you right now, if Jimbo Fisher came out and was like, "We're offended for a thumbs down," I'd be like, "Uh, no, we're fucking not." No, nah, you got to ride with him. No, I, 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 can't, I don't think I could. To. It's just the softest thing ever. Um, and then also Sark said, "Winning is hard at uh, Big Twelve media days." Winning is hard. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> Although I, I'm kind of starting to. Uh-oh. Buy in on Texas? No, oh. the opposite. Oh. oh no! No, I'm starting to like all Texas fans believe they made the hire of the off season, and it's very possible they did. It's a very good hire. That being said, no, is it? it I, we I think will it see. is. We will, you think it is correct? At least on you, paper. You think it is? You think it is? He has a 45 and 37 career record as a and head coach. Well, he also had. Some he issues. has a 45 no, and 37 record as a head Alabama, coach. Alabama. He went. He went to Alabama where he got to coach. Heisman Trophy winners, where he got to, oh my God, Sark's offense, Sark's offense, Sark's offense. Yeah, got the best players in the fucking country, got the best quarterback, got the best running back, got the best offensive line. Yeah, he, I think that Alabama put a little bit too much shine on him. I think he'll be good. I don't know if he's the guy. That, we'll see. If he is, I'll, I'll come back in three years, five years, and say, I'm sorry I was wrong. Sark was the guy. What do you say about like the Mac Jones comparison then? Mac Jones, we don't know how good he is because he had the best receivers, best O-line, best I, running backs. I believe I've said that. Same thing then? Okay. I've said that dozens of times. I do think that... I mean, Mac Jones is one of the best college quarterbacks ever. But I'm saying, but like, in the same way... Uh, no, he's not. In Statistically. Terms of, in terms of But efficiency. he was throwing to the best receivers. He had the best O-line. We're saying with Sark, he had to work with the best players. So, of course, the offense is going to look good. Uh, I just It's one he, of those... It's one of... The coaching with Saban... Then coach, why hasn't a Clemson offensive coordinator been get, has gotten a great job? That's a good question. I well, mean, Venables wants to stay. I mean, but, he's but, but, well, he's a DC. I mean, yeah, but but if they got an offensive coordinator who had a previous pass as an up and coming head coach that was derailed by unfortunate life problems, I mean, this was a very unique situation. It's like it's but, not like a whole lot of Bama offensive coordinators have gotten great jobs of, before. So well, Brian Dayball is right now about to. I would say he may be an NFL head coach next year, right? Or he's and done then, other things. And then who was it before? Yeah, well, but Brian Dayball was like – Like Lane Kiffin left Alabama and went to Florida Atlanta. Yeah, but now he he's an SEC coach, though. Now he's an SEC coach, though. And I will say 
Lane Kiffin is probably an inept, not inept, a good comparison because both failed at USC, both offensive minds. I mean, is Lane Kiffin going to turn? I would rather be Texas than Ole Miss because, like, obviously, always, yeah. always. Yeah. Well, I mean, just and even outside but of outside Mississippi of State, that, like, I would absolutely rather be and Texas. So I don't know. I Texas is a top program in the country. But I will say, the amount of hype they Texas fans have. Uh, be oh, careful. No. oh no! Oh no! It's okay. Oh, no. It's okay. Oh, no. It's okay. We're okay. 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 Um, but. <laughs> Well, the amount of hype Texas fans have based off of a bowl game against a not very good Colorado team. Yeah. Um, and a second half from um, B. John Robinson. And, and well, B. John's Thompson. pretty good. B. John. And then Casey Thompson. Yeah, well, Casey Thompson might not even be the starter. Which is crazy because after that game, I it – appeared that he was the next big thing yeah but hudson card is still yep. there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 yeah. can i make a point that we're you know you said earlier that the big 12 is run by texas the fact that we've just spent all this time talking about big 12 media days and haven't mentioned one other team is proof in the pudding yeah we've been talking about it too long no so. no, no but i'm not but i'm not even but last saying that, week but, we sucked off oklahoma well but that's what I, i'm saying you know Brandon, did, definitely yeah. Yeah, 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 but yeah. i'm saying like that's the whole point is that like no matter in no matter where texas is in the rankings they still run that conference speaking of didn't I say that? Oh my God! You can have the same opinion. I'm talking about headlines. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Well, other than speaking of the Oklahoma thing, last week it just shows what baby back. Relax. Are you gonna break the mic? Shows what baby back bitches college football you fans are. Clock nine thousand. Yeah, yeah, Mike? yeah. He there, was. He's there reliving his college days. So oh. There were some Oklahoma fans. Oh man, that I just don't like that on camera. When I put something out, <laughs> can I tell college football? Go. There were some Oklahoma fans when I put out college when I put out that last week when you yeah. put it out, uh, me glowing about them, calling them to win the yeah. national championship. There were some saying, "Yeah, you know he's right, but he's never been a friend of Oklahoma, so I don't buy what this guy's saying." Or this guy's stupid. Or, this, uh, don't don't believe this guy. Don't listen to this guy because he's been mean to us before. Shut up, you baby back bitch. Brandon Walker tells the truth at all times, and this year you're a legitimate national title contender. You were pretending before. Sorry, that's not my fault. That's yours, Oklahoma. I'm not going to have this argument again because I really don't feel like it. But it is bizarre to me that you did not like Spencer Rattler last year. And all of a sudden, coming into this season, it's like, oh, they're a legit national title contender. What, Jack? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean the point. Like, do the... He literally did the finger wag in my face. Um, He said yeah, last week that the biggest question about Oklahoma is Spencer Rattler. Well, I would say if you don't know if the quarterback is that good, saying they're a national title contender might be a reach. They're great he's everywhere. Said he's good. They're great everywhere. I mean, I don't know how good Alabama's quarterback is going to be. They're a national title contender. And oh, here's Alabama. the thing. I say the same thing this year about Ohio State and about Alabama that I and said Clemson. last year about Oklahoma. Not really about Clemson. I've seen enough of that guy to know that oh, I think he's going to be very good. Oh, DJ So yeah, uh, be good. I say the same thing about so Alabama good. and Ohio State that I said last year about Oklahoma. Last year, Rattler had never done anything. He never had a meaningful snap. I said, all right, don't just – because he's an Oklahoma quarterback, don't just assume he's going to be great. And the first half of the year, he wasn't great. He threw a bunch of interceptions. He got good down the stretch. Uh, but last year – but this year – it's his second year. I think he. Is. I think he's going to be good. I think they're a national title contender. I don't know if he's elite. That's my question. Okay, fine. Brandon Walker tells the truth. I don't like <laughs> when you call yourself by your full name. And no, 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 it's it's good. It's like a good bit. Brandon Walker tells the truth. What do you think about Mike Gundy's haircut? I think um, it's pre mullet. I'm just. I think he knows his jobs. Mike online. Gundy's one of those guys. I'm just tired of talking about. Mike Gundy is a guy – I always thought the mullet was a look-at-me kind of thing, and Mike Gundy, we still talk about I'm a man, I'm 40. Like, he's like 50 now? Like, shit or get off the pot with Mike yeah, Gundy. Like, yeah. it, I mean, Oklahoma State's been the same team for, for the last 12 years. You b be careful what you wish for. Because last time I did this, we fucking hired the guy. And also <laughs> – <laughs> Remember? Mike yes. Leach, yeah. yeah. But mm -hmm. be careful what you wish for, Oklahoma State. Look at what – you don't have to look that far to Nebraska – like you fire Bo Pelini because you're like, oh, we can't go over the nine and three curve. He was eight in our August fourth was always Bo Pelini day, which is funny. Or nine and nine nine and four is Bo Pelini day. Be careful what you wish for because nine wins, ten wins, and then maybe once in a blue moon. Let's not forget, he got fucked over from a national championship. Yeah, Nebraska would love to be in the nine win area right now. And but that's where they were. Be careful what you wish for. Gundy may not be getting you to that. Glory land right now, but who knows? And you get the right guys in there. By the way, 
Spencer Sanders just like did has not turned out to be who I thought he was going to be. So no, I, you had him. You had him winning multiple Heisman. So. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, <laughs> I have four. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he was going to stay gonna after sweep. his third. His he was going to yeah. he was going to yeah. stay and get, He's gonna get, get the four. rare double Heisman for his senior year. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. So all right. Um, uh, oh boy, boy, oh boy, the story that she's putting on the screen here. <laughs> uh. Mm, I mm, did this solely for Brandon. So last week, all right, so how do I want to attack this? Lane okay. Kiffin <laughs> took to Twitter this week to address rumors that he, quote, done knocked up an ex-Ole Miss cheerleader whose father just so happens to be an Ole Miss professor. Lane Kiffin, quote, tweets and says the best part of this rumor is the usage of done knocked up, crying emoji, some people, face palm emoji. Last week, if you remember, I went on a bizarre rant where I, uh, I I was like, you know, Lane Kiffin's a real father figure of the Ole Miss program. Yes, he did. did. His program's his and baby. And I thought it was bizarre. At None the time. of you well s- checked up. Can I can I please? I mean, I told you this before we started recording, but I remember you saying that, and I think if you went back and like just like put a freeze frame on my face, I think I was like, what is he talking? But about? I joked but about I, it, but I didn't want to be like. What are you talking about? I um, joked about um, it. I'll I, put it in. I joked yeah. about it then because I felt comfortable joking about it because I didn't find it to be a credible rumor. Um, also, and I'll just say this. I think it's just a rumor. I don't think anything's true here. But if Lane Kiffin, n- quote, knocked up an ex Ole Miss cheerleader, good for him? What, I mean, what's the not- problem? He can – he can have sex yeah. with anybody he wants, and an excellent. This isn't a colonel, Mister. If he wants that, whatever. If, if that rumor were true, which I don't think it is, and he he joked about it on Twitter, so I think we can talk about it. If that scenario happened, right? What's Tiffin knocked done knocked up an ex Ole Miss cheerleader? What? Good. Congrats on the sex, Lane. Yeah, I don't. He's not married. Yeah. Ex Ole Miss cheerleader. I assume would that mean person would be not married, and uh, that and that uh, would be out of assuming college. they're an ex Ole Miss cheerleader. That means they're out of college. They're grown. So what's the problem? I mean, even yeah. I mean. It would be probably not, probably illegal, or not illegal, but like if she was in college, it wouldn't be the end of the world. If she was 21, it would be frowned upon. For be sure. frowned upon. Oh, it'd get him fired if he, yeah, if he, he I think yeah, get but, him but, fired. But, 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 a uh, grown person, whatever. So, anyway, not to talk about it much because mm-hmm. I, I think it was a silly rumor that, uh, you know. I just love <laughs> that Lane Kiffin just like, just talks shit on Twitter. Let's like, not forget that Tennessee fans based the whole coaching rumor off of, um, a, Coach's wife being an ex Tennessee cheerleader, John Gruden. They That's always true. brought that yeah. up. It is true. They were like, his wife Damn, was an ex Tennessee cheerleader. Who gives a shit? X. That's the point. All right, Kyle Unglung. I can't, I. I don't want to talk about this. Yeah, I don't either. I just, I'm, I'm tired. No, no, we, I we've had too much Texas. All right, I can't, well, I, I honestly, we'll talk about it next week though. I won't talk about it next week. I honestly, I will say this. Katie, okay, go back for, for just a second. Unless yeah. my eyes are lying to me, I. I'm seeing that the uh, that Texas A&M is not even in the top 35. Uh, no, they're 17. Oh, thank God. They are. Yeah, that's you, what I was staring you guys at. Earlier. Have a, you guys have your logo can't be small. Yeah, yeah that is true. true. Your logo can't if it's small, it just blends I all was, together. I was looking at the fact that he had Arkansas. Okay, fine. We don't have no. We don't talk about it anymore. My eyes just North Carolina me. guys sneaking in there. That's good. That's wild. win totals. All right, we're gonna do ACC and Big Twelve win totals. Let's and go. Then, let's uh, do ACC first. I'll we talked a lot of Big Twelve today. <laughs> way too much Big Twelve. By the way, guys, you have to watch your YouTube because Casey's face expressions today have been very funny. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're, <laughs> they've just like even when Brandon said things, you've just been like. You ready for a pee break? Do I we, already did one. Why? Well, no, I know, you, know you, been, you, you. Be, be like careful. Do not hit the cord. Jack, the bars are opening again. Thank God. Going out more. America's back, baby. Restaurants are open, but you know what that means? What? We're all spending a little bit more money. Because when we were inside, we were cooking maybe. We weren't spending as much on bar tabs. But unfortunately, with the good comes more credit card debt. You're not wrong. I will say there's a lot more on that credit card statement. Max Bar, Saloon, something yeah. like that. So it's Factory is, 380. Yes, yeah, yeah, Factory. You know, throw yeah, throw yeah, them yeah. out there. But our friends at Upstart are making this easy. And Thank Brandon, God. you have 17 children. I, why do you keep saying 17? I well, have four. Well, why? Four lovely children. Well, they are very lovely. Very lovely. You love to spoil your wife. I sure do. Yeah. So you love to, to put money on your credit card. Every once in a while, you might need some help at Upstart. I don't know if you do, but people out there like you might. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So our friends at Upstart right now are making it so easy to get a personal loan to pay off your debt, and it's all online. That's the thing. It only takes five minutes. You can go check your rate. You don't have to go to the bank. You don't have to sit in front of a person and say, hey, this is my problem. You can just do it all in the privacy of your own home. Yep. That's important. I like it. You like it. So if you want to do a five-minute online rate check, you can check your rate up front for loans from $1,000 to $50,000. That's quite a lot of money. And you can get approved on the same day. And here's the key, Brandon. You can get Tell me the key. You can get approved as fast as one business day. One? One. Uno. One O-N-E. Well, that's a lot of letters and <laughs> syllables, but sure. In one business day, and if debt is taking over your life, which it is a lot for a lot of people, 2020 was very tough. It's time to get a fresh start with Upstart. So you can find out how to lower your monthly payment right now at upstart.com slash roughness. Again, that's upstart.com slash roughness. Don't forget to use our URL to let you know we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit income and certain information provided on your loan applications. Again, that's upstart.com slash roughness. And we can just say it, right? Fuck credit card debt. Yes. How was your pee break? Oh, it was excellent, Casey. Thank you for asking. You're Let's welcome. do win totals. Yeah. As it, these are all, I assume, from the Barstool Sportsbook yes, they are. app. Um, that did say, also a website. Yeah, and if you're in, uh, if you're as of now, if you're in Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, or Pennsylvania, go play on that thing. It is fantastic. And for the rest of you, we coming. It, we, we, we coming. We coming. We coming, but not only are, are we coming, mm-hmm. which I every time I say it, it sounds worse and worse, and I can feel Katie's <laughs> Grinch grin getting bigger, but you, can, you should still go on the website and the app and yeah, sure. look at the totals yeah, because sure. we're by far the most right sports book on the planet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, these, I as I made this slideshow, I was kind of just in my head picking it over and under. Half of them, I'm like, I have no idea. So, shall we? Shall we? Let's start I, with the I, ACC because guys, guys, I, I want to do something real quick. Oh, we'll do the ACC. I had three questions that I wrote down for <laughs> Pick Central today, college football questions that I didn't get to, and I think they're a good exercise now. Okay. Because we did a, we, we're going to do ACC and Big Twelve. Yeah. We're so okay. We Are we really sure t- you don't have ADD? We haven't talked much. You up might actually need to get on that Adderall today. <laughs> prescription. I'm going to ask you three questions. I want you all to answer. Yes. Okay. Yes. Let's do it. Three. Quote unquote blue bloods that are down, which one makes it back first? Okay. And we probably asked these before, but it's always good to revisit. Would you rather buy future stock in Tennessee, Nebraska, or Florida State? Florida State. Florida State. One hundred percent. Yes. Why? I think Tennessee has recruiting violations seriously coming down the line and they're gonna get issues for it. Plus they they just have they have such a high bar. They're not going to let someone stay there long enough to actually fulfill their like recruiting class. Um, who is the second one you said? Nebraska. Nebraska. Nebraska they're too, they're too far gone right now. It's hard to recruit to that area. It's another country. There's nothing there. But for a state, Mike Norvell has a class. It's going to be yes. a few years out. We'll actually see it. I just did the preview for them on my own. Like there's, they need to stop the bleeding right now, but they have the pieces. Like you can kind of see in the distance, like the pieces starting to stack up. So you can see it happening; it's still out there. But I think, give them five or six years. My answer for Florida State would be uh, all Mike Novaro doesn't things that have she, six years. No, maybe not. But I mean, I think if they keep with in a trajectory, the can, conference they're in, I think that the ACC is more open than the Big Ten and the SEC. Much. Maybe. Although I think the Big Ten West, if you can get your footing, is... is, is but I don't think Nebraska is near that is door. It's friendly enough. I, I, I think you could find a niche there that you could be okay. It's hard to I mean, you could definitely though. If you're Nebraska and you hire the right coach, you can take Iowa's spot in the Big Ten West, no problem. Yeah, but I think that Florida in State... Westerns. Yeah. Yes, but you have to hire the right coach first. And I do think and that... And I, I don't know that they don't have... I, I, would, I would lean towards Nebraska here. Really? Florida State is in the ACC, but Florida State is in the SEC ACC footprint. Florida State, when they go out and recruit, they're recruiting. They got Auburn on top of them. They got Alabama over here. They got uh, Miami. They got Florida. They got. There's a lot of hands in the cookie jar there. Florida State. I don't know. I don't know that I believe in Mike Norvell the, the way I believed in him before last year. So we'll we'll just have to see. I don't. Also, loser. It's definitely Florida State. The yes. original one. Yeah. Yeah, the, the original one. Oh, the OG the loser. The way that you said that with so much stank behind it. Well, that's the way you said it. Loser. Yeah, because he had COVID, right? Oh, I'm not doing this. It's a new season. <laughs> what, do you, what, what do you mean in the future? Like, how does it cash? I don't know. Um, I thought Katie's points were 
very eloquent. But? But. Florida State recruited very well under Willie Taggart, too. Yeah. Something's, and they had to, and something's the, a miss there. There's a disconnect. I think we're going to – I think nothing against Florida State fans. I wouldn't be surprised if Miami takes over for the state of Florida in the ACC, at least. However, they could still – Miami could be better than Florida State. Florida State could be better than those two other options. Yeah, because um, all three of my uh, of the Florida teams could be up at the same time. It's I'm just – I'm going to go with – I'm going with Tennessee. Uh, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me ask you another way. Those three teams, which one would you want to be back first? Nebraska. Yeah. No, oh, Tennessee for sure. Nebraska. Chaos. If Tennessee became a legit, like I like, there's something about Tennessee. Like, shout out to their fans. They are they're very similar to. They're extra. I would just Can say I don't how extra they would be though. It's no, good they the would be so extra. Brandon would hate them. Yeah, like oh, that's would, true. Like, that's a good point. It would be, and it would be. Also, Big T coming into the office oh, every day with oh, a smirk on his kind of Alabama that. being on top of the world is very boring because their fans are boring. Their fans are oh, just, they're just so used to winning. Right, but they are. But, but like, Tennessee fans aren't boring. Alabama fans are fucking boring. But if Alabama was down for a long period of time, yeah. they wouldn't be boring. Yeah, they would. I, I Alabama don't think fans so. are boring. I, oh, no. if Alabama was down for a long period of time, you'd have 30,000 people in Bryant-Denny. <laughs> they'll, they'll fucking... I, By I've the way, me. they were. They were, Down yeah. for about 20... I really... We haven't seen Alabama fans I be really down in the hate, social media era. I really That's hate. That's correct. That's correct. I really hate the. Oh, these teams are going to be good forever. There's ebbs and flows of college football. Sure. Definitely. Well, this Alabama thing right now is is unprecedented. They should have flowed already. That going twelve yes. years in this dynasty. No, no, uh, two thousand nine is the yeah. first one. Yeah. So we're we're twelve years of, of national title winning. That's unheard of. I mean, he's unheard been there, of. What fourteen years? He's been there since two thousand seven. Think seven, about yeah. we think about that those Florida teams with Urban Meyer. Yeah, that was only what, like a few years. The, Pete, here, the Pete Carroll, the, at, at yeah, USC. Pete Carroll. That was the, they only won the one. This is the big thing, though. This is the big Correct. thing. Correct. Crazy. Is that it's all been in the social media era, so they are boring in comparison to teams who are losing because they're just always winning. What happens if Alabama starts losing? But even even like, like say, can you imagine how annoying they would be if like Nick Saban gets on the hot seat? No fan base is more annoying when they're losing than when they're winning. Period. Oh, I don't know about yes. that. I'd agree. Yes. Oh, you mean like winning? Okay, yes. Winning brings out the annoying well, more than it's anything like, but else. But it's like whenever, like the Patriots imagine, have Tom Brady. It's imagine, like, it's imagine whatever, the scenario. You're win. Imagine the scenario that he just said. And tennis, let's say Tennessee's the number one team oh, in the country, God. and we put out, <laughs> and we put out a road trip saying um, this this September we want to go to these games. We want to go to Ohio State. We want to go to USC. We want to go to Washington. We want to go to Florida. How many replies would be Tennessee fans? Oh, you're not going to come to Rocky Town? Oh, yeah, yeah, that'd right. be all of it. <laughs> that'd be <laughs> fun, though. I think like I didn't say it would be fun. Show. I'm just saying Alabama fans are boring in Tennessee. You know. I I want Nebraska to be good because it's nostalgic. Because I loved watching those. Well, these 90s are all teams. the. Well, uh, that's it, the three but, biggest programs in the '90s, right? Tennessee, know, Nebraska, and Florida. Well, Florida. This is like State. a this is a like actual personal nostalgia because my I think I've said I've told the story. Like my next door neighbors were Nebraska fans. And you played Nebraska. Yeah, Every so year. it's like and like that for me would be fun to see. All right, and another question. That's a oh. great question, and we're gonna make a graphic. Here's another good one. Okay, three blue bloods that are slightly down right now. They're not all the way down. Okay, well, they're in fact we probably talk about them like they're, they're more down than they are. They're teetering. Three blue bloods. Which one pops first? If you had to bet on one Penn team State. to win a national title first, Penn State is not in this. Okay, sorry. <laughs> if you had to bet on one of these three teams <laughs> to get to the national title game first. Would you bet on Michigan? Oh, that guy would. Texas or USC? Oh boy! All three a little down, but not really down. With I mean, the they're fine. Coaches? Well, I'm, no, it's no, it's who gets to a national championship first. It could be in twenty years. Yeah, but who does it first? Michigan, Texas, USC. I have an answer. Go ahead, because I I am in a pretzel. I think USC would at least make it to the playoffs first, because they have an easier shot out of the Pac-12. Okay, you're just going to jump the line and answer? I – It's not the full answer, but – I hate – we on this podcast have this idea of the Pac. The Pac-12 is going to be a top three conference. This I year. agree, the Pac-12 is going to no, be really but good. I'm saying you know, she said it earlier. She tweeted it like people aren't talking about Washington. They're going to be really fucking good. Same yeah, no, I'm Arizona's, confused. Arizona's, Arizona's Oregon State good. will be like a, the sixth best team in that conference, and they're going to be good, like yeah. a top fifty team. No, but I'm still saying USC in the in the world of Pac-12 has an easier shot 
to get at the top of it than say Texas against do, Oklahoma. Do that? I don't know. Texas, Texas is I would say high Texas like twelve. Right now, Texas versus Oklahoma for a Big Twelve. I think that's as likely as USC saying. versus Oregon. Texas, Texas has, saying, Texas has a, a, a big roadblock in front of them in Oklahoma, and USC really doesn't. The only thing keeping USC out of it out of being is there is themselves. USC. But that, go, but that goes Oregon. back to like what we said with the original, with the first question was like Florida State has the least amount of roadblocks than Nebraska. Michigan, or, Texas, USC. Which one gets to a national title game first? I'd say Michigan. Okay. I say USC. I think I'm going to say USC. I say USC because I think I'm going to say USC. I believe – if the three mm. jobs came open tomorrow, USC would hire the be- would get the best coach interested. I'm just gonna. I was gonna say I'm going with Texas. Okay. I really want to Michi- say Michigan. I think Michigan's the furthest. That's okay. I, know, I think it's. I think it's USC. Wait, did you I say Michigan? Michigan? Yeah. Okay. I don't think Michigan's nearly as far as we at. Like they are. actually, that is true. Well, yeah. It depends on how they Ohio bounce State. back for this year and next year, like what the trajectory looks like. Damn. All right. That's a good question too. Oh, that there's that another one, one. That one put me in a blender. Yes. I like these. There's a third question. Yeah. These are good debates, too. Two recent powers that had mediocre years last year. If you had to bet all of your money responsibly. Of course. On the Barstool Sports. On a bounce back, would you bet on LSU bouncing back to a 10-win season? Or would you bet on Penn Penn State? Penn State. Yes, I I finally got to them. Penn State. (laughs) You would bet on Penn State. I think they're going to have the biggest bounce back of all of college I think LSU, while they had the best season in college football history – had lightning in a bottle with Joe Burrow having Joe Brady and having all the weapons around him. I do not think that Coach O is a powerhouse of a coach. I think that what Penn, Penn State last year we had them in the fucking playoff going into. The, I don't in think James Franklin's a powerhouse of a coach. Well, either. no, I mean, and obviously he's not won a national title. But would you rather have James Franklin as your coach, or would you rather have Ed Orgeron? It's closer than you might think, and you it's know closer, I don't like, like Ed Orgeron I know, very but much. I it, but who would you take? <sighs> See, I would say James Franklin has had more success over his career outside of the fact of that one year. And that one year was no, not no, his no. Ed Orgeron. I really disagree with that statement. How? James Franklin just pisses me, pisses I, people I off. Think oh, for sure. I think Coach O has – if you have a national championship, you can't compare no, no, to I'm saying like – but if you look at like the longevity of somebody's career, like James Franklin has been in the top of the coaching Well, James world. Franklin won at Vanderbilt, which is a yeah, huge thing. Fair. Then he had some very good years at, at – um, Penn State. And, yeah, and I'm not knocking at Orgeron. He had good teams and couldn't get to that next level. But if you look Coach at what o happened. did, like, though. Yeah, but he did. But then and he, he hired he, those coaches. But he loses his passing game coordinator and his quarterback, and they so stink you say out loud. Penn State. I think Penn State. We've only you. see. I'm going to. I don't. I think Penn State's going to be better this year. You guys are right there. LSU this year. We've only seen Coach O without the, all those guys. In a COVID, a year. That's a good point. Using, losing all your co- your we all your coaches than we probably should. Losing all your coaches with no spring football, with no spring football, and then all that limited practice time and then limited interaction time. You're coaches right. weren't able to go into the facility. Taught like it was a completely different year. And then you're right. So, but it's not that you are like if you do take all away that national championship. I, James Franklin has had an awesome. Well, and you can't take away a national championship. Yeah, of I course. know what you're saying, but I I feel like Penn State, like last year when I mean going into a COVID year, but still we were like, well, Penn State could be in the top four. No, none of us thought LSU could be. We no, thought they caught no. lightning in a bottle. Penn State needs a quarterback. John Clifford's not it. I love LSU fans just assuming they have a quarterback too. They I think he's good. Which one, Miles? Wait, but like he's LSU been good, good or like why not start? But he's good. How long has he been at LSU? He only played, we think of that first Mississippi State game, and he only had really two or three bad passes. Oh, he played fine. And yeah. then he played really well against Mizzou, yeah. and then he got injured. their defense. They had historically the worst defense they've ever had. Yeah. But we just assume they're going to bounce back because they're LSU. No, I don't really really think the they're assume. I, I don't assume they're going to bounce back. All right. Um, when I say bounce back, I feel like it's like a nine. Penn State's gonna be like nine and three, nine and four. What was three. the other question? Oh yeah, would you rather be um, lost in space or lost in the middle of the ocean? I don't know why I came up with that one. Space died out. I'm not doing the ocean. No, you're in a mo- you're in a module. You're protected, oh, fuck. but you just float aimlessly. You're lost in the space, ocean. lost in the ocean. The ocean. If I'm protected, then the ocean. Yeah, think about. All no, that. you're not protected in the ocean. We were what? protected in space. You're only protected in space. Well, you you would it just doesn't work if you if you're not, if you're because you would just die immediately in space. Well, then uh, then absolutely in space. If I'm protected in space, 
I'm not going to just be lost in the middle of the ocean. You die yeah, immediately. Can imagine something like biting your toe when you're in the middle of the ocean. Fuck well, you would die wow. immediately. Well, like, space, yes, I'm saying, but like imagine no, I'm being in the, the ocean. ocean. Like you, you wouldn't survive. Jack, how long would It'd you? It'd be a long, prolonged long death. Hold on to the ocean. I'd give them about three hours to come get me. After I'd start that, swallowing water. I'm just, going down. Just, <laughs> I would. just die. <laughs> Kill myself. No, I would. I if you I would everything? I would fight to the last second because you could have an unreal movie about you. <laughs> That's a good point, Jack. But think about if you were lost in space. Yeah, but then remember that movie that uh, Open Water, where Ooh. where they ended up. They, they, Life of Pi. They, 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 the girl tried to last as long as she could, last, and then finally she just started to sink, and then you hear you see the boats come across the top of the Yeah, water. no thanks. I'll take space. Um. Okay, that was wind totals. Wind totals. That was interesting. I, that was very interesting. Good call, I Brandon. I had some good good topics for Big Central today. All right. I what have happened? Our, Did I've the guys not get to your topic? Huh? What happened? Aww. We just didn't get there. Okay, Aww. it happens. We talked about a bunch of shit. All right, so we'll start with the defending ACC champions for the last 38 years, the <laughs> Clemson Tigers. Their over-under on the Barstool Sportsbook app is 11 and a half. Basically, are they going to beat Georgia or no? Casey Smith. I'm going to take the under. I think they're going to lose to Georgia. Because if you take the over, you're saying they're undefeated in the regular season. I'm going to take the under, but not for that reason. Oh. I think they could beat Georgia and still oh, they go definitely under. they could. They literally have – this has no margin for error, 11.5. They could beat Georgia and be flying on top of the world and walk into Raleigh uh, with, with uh, five returning offensive starters and a new quarterback and a new running back – and lose to NC State. They could get hit in the mouth by somebody they don't expect to get ha- hit in the mouth by. Um, I mean, if you take the over, you're saying they're going to be undefeated. Correct, yes. Right. So that's so. the. I what was the juice on this? I didn't check that. That's all right. Don't check yeah. it. Uh, well, that's important for a win total. I'll, is, look, I'll, I'll pull it up. Ugh. Oh, no, I'm touching the cord. Don't that's touch okay. the cord. All right, no, next team, please. Oh, no, no. Florida State, Woo. five and a half. Five and a half. And by the way, by the way, so Saturday, November 13th, all of this podcast is going to do a boost for UConn at Clemson. UConn, it may be plus 52. We're doing the boost. Jack. I already told Westy. Here on the Booster Club. Yes. Um, all right. FSU, Florida State, five and a half. How much better are they? Is McKenzie Milton their starter? Do they have enough weapons? No. Why am I talking like this no is a movie weapons. trailer? Yeah, I don't know why you're talking like that. Pro Football Focus ranked McKenzie Milton 14th best quarterback. And he might not even be starting. Uh, I'm going to take the over. Why? Because I think I think they'll beat Jacksonville State. Yes. I think they'll beat Wake Forest. I think you assume too much. Wake Forest not a bad football team. Not bad, yeah. but I'm just I'm just going off. I think they'll beat UMass. Okay. Uh, oh, that is tough. Holy shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm taking the under. That last uh, half yeah, of, after UMass tough. it gets rough. Damn. Also, you know Before those little you soft left. Florida boys are going to go up to Boston in November and think it's eight I say billion Florida degrees. State under five Ooh. and a half. I say Florida State a five and seven team. Uh, they open with Notre Dame. They end with Florida. I think that's two losses. That, I mean, after you, October 30th down is Although tough. I would love to see them give Notre Dame a hell of a run on Sunday, September 5th. They gave them a run last year. They did. And and, and I, it wouldn't be shot. I mean, Notre Dame's going to be down offensively. They'll so. If they showed up and were able to, they're not down. I mean, defensively, they'll still be really good. Um, yeah. Damn, that's a tough one. I well, still I still think I'm going to take the over for the sake of this I'll go, exercise. I'll go under. Is anybody keeping tabs? I'm under. Are we keeping tabs on this? No, I, are you keeping tabs? We can take, we, I can go back and keep tabs. You just don't want to keep tabs now? it be easier to do it now? I would. What if you kept tabs? Uh, give, give her your notebook. I'm not giving her my notebook. I'll I will keep tabs. I got this at a Japanese store I will keep on tabs. Times Square. We'll, we'll, we shall move on. Wait, what happened to your 200 200- notebooks that you got from the walmart i fucking <laughs> left them damn dude well, I, yeah, you I love my golf clubs go too i gotta i gotta get my mom and fedex a bunch of shit maybe yeah, no, I can do that. May, you left them there intentionally so you could go back shut up <laughs> miami <laughs> nine and a half we need to get a little quicker with this yeah, miami nine and a half uh gut feeling go under over ccsu i grew up right near them i believe over I think Miami is going to be really good if De'Aaron King is healthy. Uh, their only real their real problems here are versus Alabama and at North Carolina. Uh, otherwise, if they go ten and two, I cash that over. I I feel like Miami is going to be really fucking good. Hey, Katie, were I, you at the 
game where North Carolina beat Miami in 2000. Oh, yeah. And that. The show, toe drag. One of the greatest. I was on the field. Viral. Not viral, but like. Oh, there was Caleb a, right there in the corner of that? Yeah, yeah there's yeah. a yeah, great yeah. clip from there that is, is awesome. And I, and she was still there, so. I think they're going to win nine games. Wait, so we're all over? No, I said she under. She was under. Because I think they're going to win nine. Boston College, seven wins. Uh, I will go first. Yeah. Boston College, seven wins. Over. Very good quarterback. Uh, very good receiver. Uh, decent offense. Uh, Jeff Halfley in his second year. They had life last year. Phil Dracovich, uh the transfer from Notre Dame. Uh, st- started out really well, but ended up de- doing okay. They got a lot back defensively, I believe. Uh, they open. I think they start four and zero. They open with Colgate, mm-hmm. UMass, Temple, Missouri at home. Uh, then they got Clemson. But I, you give me those four. Then they got NC State at home. They got at Louisville and at Syracuse. I think Why they, are they at Clemson? Again? They can handle those as well. I don't know. Uh, I think COVID just fucked the schedule yeah. last year. Uh, they got Virginia Tech at home. Then they got Florida State at home. They got Wake Forest at home to close the year. I think Boston College. This is my favorite bet so far. Boston College over seven wins. I I'm gonna take the over too. My thing is Boston College hasn't hit eight wins in, in a, recent memory. In a long time. Yeah. Very it's been long a long time. time they basically they have the best running back, sorry, wide receiver duo, no running backs, and then half is defensive-minded. I noticed something about Boston College the other day. Yeah. Oh, what would you notice? The best, the best college town name in America. Tell me Chestnut Hill just doesn't oh, remind you of, of autumn, of fall. Chestnut Hill, don't do that. Don't be it's Mr. True. Yukon. Oh, right. you're it's biased. True. Chestnut Hill's Chestnut an incredible Hill. I am not Doors. biased. I have That's multiple friends name. who went to Boston College yeah, and my and uncle. It's gorgeous. Doors. Chestnut Hill? Chestnut Hill's awesome. Is it gorgeous? Boston I don't know College if it's gorgeous or not. Is, is, Chestnut Hill yes. is a great Chestnut name Hill for is better than Storrs, Connecticut. You tell me you wouldn't watch and a... It's, much, it's a nicer campus. You wouldn't watch a, a, a college great age school. or a teen drama about a bunch of teenagers, a bunch of uh, rich, good-looking people, and it's called Chestnut Hill? Absolutely. Everybody's watching that show. Everyone. That's going crazy yes. on Netflix. Absolutely. Did you see Chestnut Hill? Yeah. yeah. For sure. I agree with you. So both on the over? Yes. I am, yes. Under. Louisville, seven. Under. Hell, oh, so under. Under. <laughs> So under? Very under. I don't know how it's so under, but I'm hitting the under. I don't think this coach They that had bad. 24 turnovers. Their defense was actually okay. Offense was basically blindsided by the fact they could not keep the ball. They outscored nine of their 11. Yeah, but it's just so new, and they're just such a dumpster fire. But they fire. also have a tough non-conference. Right. Like, they open with Ole Miss. They'll lose that. They, they got UCF. UCF on a Friday night. That's yeah. not easy. Then you got two road trips. I mean, they could look up and be one and four Kentucky at the end of in the, yeah. September. Right. I'm, I'm taking the under. But – well, are you going to talk yourself out of it? I they don't have North Carolina yet. Don't do it, Brandon. Where, 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 do wi- where are your guaranteed wins? Or okay, they're guaranteed to beat Eastern Kentucky, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Until, until I think I, I will pick them to beat Virginia. That's, that's two. That's not guaranteed, though. Your for, guaranteed for the, win For the purpose of this Kentucky. exercise, I'm comfortable saying it's a win. I'm okay. comfortable saying they beat Syracuse. I'm comfortable saying they beat Duke. I'm not comfortable saying they beat Kentucky. I got four comfortable yeah. wins there. If I'm going to go Take with a, a total, I got to beat comfortable wins right around the total. All Jack? right. What do you say? Jack? It's almost so absurd that I'm taking the over. Okay. It's like crazy. We should go. Like it doesn't make sense that the, it's at seven. Yeah. All right, and the go. juice isn't that crazy either. NC State six, over. 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 But. But September 11th. Maybe I'm respecting Ooh, them too boy. much. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Maybe I'm respecting them too much. Let me look at this. No, I think they'll beat South Florida. They'll uh, beat Furman. They'll I think beat they'll Latte. beat Louisiana Tech. Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay, so they got South oh. Florida. They got Mississippi State. At Mississippi State, they very well could win that game. They got Furman. They got Clemson, Louisiana Tech, Boston College, at Miami, at Boston College. Versus Louisville at Florida State at Wake Forest Syracuse North Carolina. You know what's hard about this exercise? What is that like? We're going team to team, and it's right. like we might contradict ourselves. We're contradicting ourselves for sure, like absolutely. I'm comfortable they're good enough to at least push that. I go over. I'm gonna say over. All right, keep going. under. All right, or a push, but I got my money. Syracuse back. three and a half Jesus, wins. That's a low total. <laughs> like remember, I would... remember when Dino Babers was the guy. Remember For one year. when everyone was like, oh, my God, Syracuse is going to be the one to take down Clemson? Yeah. Tommy DeVito's still there. Tommy still. DeVito. 17 years he's been. Is Garrett Schrader, Schrader going to get a shot at that job? Can't find an offensive line to guard him to save his life. Garrett Schrader transferred from Mississippi State. He's I know. The, he's got a helicopter. Yeah, he's yeah. on the – and he has the 
Yeah, the, the scruff, yeah. yeah. Which I don't know if he still has it. Yeah. So they got Ohio, Rutgers, Albany, Liberty. I don't know if they can beat Ohio. Lib- I'm almost Lib- confident they can't beat Ohio. God, that's crazy to think. Ohio's one of the best under. teams in the MAC, and it's at Ohio too. No, yeah. I'm taking the under. That's a rough over. I'm taking the under. Ugh. I mean, that's a rough. Uh, you opener. just like you're not in a good spot I as know, in a, a Power Five team where you're starting your season away at a MAC in that's a MAC gonna team. That's going to be dying to play you. That like you, but also you're not in a good spot for your program. <laughs> yeah, that would <laughs> never happen with Florida State ever. They also open they, having Liberty. Liberty. Liberty just owns them. Dog walked mm-hmm. them last year. Yeah. And then they they did they played as a joke Empire State of Mind in Syracuse, which is literally like five hours away from New York City. Yeah. I got under. Under. Um Wake Forest, six and a half. See, this is where I know I'm gonna start contradicting myself. I, my brain's in a pretzel. Because I know I've said, Oh, this team's gonna beat Wake Forest, and I'll say, Oh, Wake Forest is gonna beat uh, them. Cons right has now. definitely said that. Army's going to beat them on. That's a tricky game, though. At Army, yeah, they got to go to West They Warren. do have two weeks to prepare for that triple option offense, though, because not two weeks, but they have. Oh, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, ain't a comfortable opener either. I'm going to say under. Um, under. I'm going to open them at three and zero. Oh. Then I'll give them Louisville. Then I'll give them Duke. So I'm at five. Oh, gets rough after that. Yeah. Oh, you could be you could be at five wins at the end of October and go zero and four in November. They got at North Carolina, and NC State, at Clemson, at Boston College. That's a very, uh, that's very. Mm. Ah. <laughs> I was confident in this. Sam Hartman's not a bad quarterback. No, but this is Robinson. That's Coach it. is not bad. Coach is very good, actually. Oh. I'm gonna go over. Fuck it. Katie Jack. I will tell you when, when, when one of these bets really pops up and I love it. I, I loved uh, – I, I love one. I, I, I don't or remember which one I said I love the most. What's another one we're doing this? That's all we're confident. Big 12. Big 12. There's a one in the ACC. All right, keep going. Duke three and a half <laughs> at Charlotte. That's a weird opener too, although that's a good fan base they, opener. They actually know they won. Oh, yeah, because – yeah, yeah, that is a good – Yeah. That's probably why they did it. Yeah. Uh, so North I see Carolina three wins for sure. I don't even see the three – Kansas, I don't even know. I mean, they're beating Kansas. Uh, I don't know. I don't Duke know, Kansas. Bad. Duke's bad. Yeah, but Kansas is really no. bad. And after all the shit with their I think off Kansas season, is going to be oh, not no, good. No, you're not, good. not. I think. Don't do it. They've got half a Buffalo. That's true. They've half a Buffalo, but like. they still got so much bad. Yeah, yeah so much bad. I, I mean, still, what? Kansas You put Buffalo game. last year in the Big 12. How good would they have been? Maybe a few wins? Maybe. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But uh, we're not talking about the Big 12. We're talking about okay, playing I'm, Duke. I know, yeah. I'm gonna take, that is true. I'm going to take the over Duke. by a half. Like, I think they win four games. They I'm going to take the under by a half. They're going to they're gonna accidentally win a game they shouldn't. Georgia Tech, five. Feels like over. they should be a little further along at this point. They're in third year, Jeff Collins. That quarterback over. last year was pretty good. Uh-huh. Uh, Northern mm-hmm. Illinois, yeah, Kennesaw State. Freshman. For a true freshman, sure, but I, you would just assume there's a maturation and getting better, right? They got a hard second half of that schedule. Um, Fuck. Five? I got to get to five? I'm pushing. Sure wins? I'm pushing. What, are you having a baby? No, I hope not. Mm. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to give them two to start. Then I'm gonna get. Oh, yeah, Northern Illinois, Kansas three. State. And I'm gonna give them, uh, I think they'll beat Pitt at home. I think they'll win at Duke, so I'm at four. I don't. Know, Virginia just keeps showing up, and I just keep having to make a decision about Virginia. I'm Virginia to, to wake up like coin flips. Right. I'm gonna take over on Georgia Tech. You know what? I'm gonna say they sneak up and get somebody. I'm gonna say oh, Georgia Tech over. I believe in Jeff. Collins. Over. I'm over. over there. Pushing. Um. Woo. North Carolina. Let like Katie talk first. I want to push this. I. I'm going strong on my opinion on this one. Oh. Yeah, me too. Strong. And my opinion is a strong under. They have the best quarterback mm. in the country. They have the best quarterback in the country, and they are replacing their running backs. They're replacing their receivers. Their defense just okay last year, and a pretty tough schedule. They open at Virginia Tech. They close at NC State. They have at Notre Dame. Oh, whoa, but, 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 no, this whoa, is a tough schedule. Whoa. NC. NC State's not. I don't. This is where we start to contradict ourselves because we did struggle with NC State. I earlier. don't. I don't think and NC State for sake of a That's rivalry, same. sure, but for an actual football team, I really. I'm don't going think under. For, I'm going under. You guys should feel free to go over. No, I'm, I'm going to go under. I'm pushing. I'm going over, and give me. And also, it's plus money on the over. 
So you're plus one ten. You're going. You're going over. I went over. Tell me why. I think this is a pretty good team, and that I don't think this schedule is that difficult. So, no, that a year, the the year. To. I would assume they'll probably lose one of the games against Miami and Notre Dame, and but if not. I mean, if I'm a North Carolina fan, I'm looking at the schedule thinking, man, it is good that I could go Clemson. into the ACC championship game 12-0. and 0. It's Don't get me wrong. The Notre Dame game is going to be hard, but you have a quarterback, and that's Notre very Dame important. No if you're going on the road to, to beat a top team, and Notre Dame will be a top 15 team, if you're going on the road, the hardest thing to do or the, the, the best thing you can have is a veteran good quarterback. Somebody who's not flappable. And I believe Sam Howell is in junior season will be – I think he'll be the best quarterback in the country. And I think that is the weapon you need to go at Notre Dame. So, if you're taking over, you're basing you, – you need him to go win at Notre Dame or beat Miami. And I, I think he is capable of doing that. Do I think the rest of the team is capable of doing that? That's where I get lost. We have a lot of returning people on defense. I think, like, we lo- – like, we had FSU in Virginia last year. So, that's why I am so scared to get excited. Like we have the stupid games. Well, that's like, because you're. That's a why I'm pushing because I think we're gonna do. I would realistically, I would love for Notre Dame, uh, best worst case scenario, competitive in the fourth, but lose. But then we're gonna have shit the bed with another random game we have no business shitting the bed for. So that's why I get the push. All right, keep going. Well, based on everything we've said, it would be hard for me to go over. Yeah, we have Pitt, to take because I've been assuming Pitt to be a win for a lot of these yeah. teams, Under- although. Shout out to, and this is the year of the quarterback who's been there the longest, and Kenny Pickett might be the guy <laughs> who's been in college the longest. There's a seventh-year center somewhere in the Midwest. I forgot. Uh, but, yeah, this is the year of the super senior. Yeah. Did you see the guy Clemson posted him? He's a super senior sixth year, and he has two what? national championship rings, I think. He's like eight rings. And then every ACC ring. Yeah. yeah. So, but um, Pitt, I'm gonna take the under just Pitt, because I've been assuming. But Pitt, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the over going. for Pitt. You know what? Three, four. Anytime, anytime I see that total of seven, five. you immediately <sighs> you immediately go to the non-conference because that's four games, right? And they open with UMass at Tennessee, Western Michigan, New Hampshire. I think Tennessee's gonna be a special breed of awful. They could start four and zero, oh. and then I got to get to what three and five in the ACC to 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 push this. So, can I win at Georgia Tech, at Virginia Tech? Their toss-up games being on the road sucks. Yeah. If your toss-up game's on the road, that stinks. That's because the, yeah, the Tennessee. They're thing. not beating Clemson anywhere. They're probably not beating Miami anywhere, and they got them at home. But And then they got North Carolina at home. They might not beat them anywhere. So, their toss-up games being on the road, like, I would love for them to be able to have Georgia Tech and Virginia Tech at home. I'd favor them. But since they, they're not, since their their home games are the toughest, I'm going to go pit under seven. Under. Here's another one that I, I just uh, – <laughs> Under – Virginia under yes. six. I'd push under, this. Under – their, their non-conference games other than William and Mary are no. BYU, Notre Dame. Don't get me wrong. They could start the season no three Illinois. and one. In Illinois, yeah. But after that, mm. Miami, Louisville oh, yeah, away. Under. Then and you get to four with Duke. And then – you have two toss-up games with Georgia Tech hard. and Virginia Tech, which aren't that much, and Pittsburgh. So that's three toss-up games. Don't get me wrong. I'm not downplaying those other teams. Question about the ACC. Is this conference good this year? Not really. Not right. better than I the Pac-12. I think, I think they're competitive. I think they fall behind we're, the Big 12. I think, they, they, we're they, gonna be, I think they're competitive they're with each other, but the are they conference. good? Uh, this we're might be the worst conference this year. But their top, their top will be good, though. Depends on how good they North Carolina is. They have three really good teams. Our individual players are going to be some of the best also, in the country. Also, do you count Notre Dame in it? No. no. Okay. We have some of the best I was individual just skill players that come in. Like we have this all is going to be if you, if you really are ranking the conferences this year, it's not easy. By the way, it's not. This is, I don't know. I have a, this season. I just have a. This is going to be a crazy season. I think it's wide open. I do too. Especially I hope in the we ACC. have. I know you've Other said it. Than, I, mean, I know you've said it, but I think like just randomly, I've thought about it. I really think there's like in. I think. I've harped on Cincinnati so many times, or not harped, m- made fun of them. There's a real chance they're making it crazy, too. Yeah, I agree. It really is. What was All your right. final say? Under? Uh, under, yeah. Under. Let's under, go. Yeah. Virginia Tech, seven. Uh, I think they're firing Justin Fuente. I'm going under. Yeah, under. Do you think Over. he lasts the entire year? Under. I think they fire him Over. mid-season. One, two, three. Okay, so I say Middle Tennessee, one. 
Three. Fire, I think they fire I mean, Fuente not, Mendes. I mean, there's a very good chance. Four, five, one two, six, Notre Dame seven. They're one and two through three weeks. I think they go into the Duke game very possibly with seven wins already. How? I, where do you see seven wins? Okay, oh, wait, stop, 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 you. stop, stop. You see they're going to beat Middle Tennessee. They're going to beat Richmond. They're going to be Pitt. They're going to be Syracuse. They're going to be Georgia Tech. You can guarantee me. You see seven. I see five that I feel okay. And that Georgia Tech's on the road. Boston College is on the road. I mean, these are these are not easy games. I think I Middle think Tennessee, two. West Virginia, Richmond, Pittsburgh, Syracuse, Georgia Tech, Boston College. You're right. I forgot. I didn't see the ads. You're right. You're right. Under. I'm not confidently yeah. on over, but I, I do lean over for sure. I go under. Okay. Under. Uh, is that the last team? All right. So, Big 12. Um, we're, we're Yeah. How long is this podcast? We need to get on, get on with it. Should we Should say we Big 12 the next week? Yeah. Tease it. Tease the Big 12? I mean, we have time. It's it's July 20th. I, I got nowhere to go, though. You got somewhere to go? You got a date? I can't, let's Kinda. do the Big 12. Come All on. Right. We'll, we'll, it's we'll only say, 10 teams. We'll save my road trip. Yeah. Just give me the list and I'll make a graphic. What, right. what do you mean? I was going to make him a graphic the same well, way the we did it. for my road trip. Yeah. Oh, okay. I got to. I, I got to say it very quickly, too. I got to run through it at the end. I, won't, I don't have to make a big I got a few I'm really a fan of in here. All right, Big 12. No, just, just, by the just way. Just we'll make a graphic. By the way, you of your saying, I forgot about this. You saying. What? Kansas, maybe. Their win total is one. I know. Oh, I was going <laughs> to. But, but again, one. again, again. One. They only have to win two. They only have to win one. <laughs> To that push. Is, yeah, that money is back. They only got to win one. <laughs> that is true. You're right. All right. Iowa State, nine and a half. Uh, as quickly as we can. Um, I'm I taking just, the over. I just love them. I, I, I think too. they're really good. They do have some not easy road games. Like, at we talk OU. about tough and tricky. I mean, at Kansas State is no picnic. At West Virginia is no picnic. At Texas Tech is no picnic. Uh, Texas at home. At OU, I mean that that's not a that's not an easy road. Slate. I think it's Iowa State, Oklahoma for the Big Twelve. But I think they're I think they're better than yeah. all those teams save Oklahoma. Over. So Iowa State over nine and a half. I will agree with Casey. Uh, okay, nobody else wants it. Kansas one. <laughs> push. <laughs> I'm gonna go I over. Just, I'm gonna I go over. I just have to push because you know I think it's funny. Them. Fuck it. I'm <laughs> going over. What other two wins? South Dakota and at Duke. <laughs> I would love oh, that. Oh, they're beating Duke. They actually they, – I think they could beat Duke. I don't think so. They're beating South no, Dakota. Their schedule's Dakota. tough. It's going to I mean, be – They're not beating Coastal Carolina. Disgusting. I just want them to – I just want to push this so bad just because it's funny. They're not beating Coastal. South Dakota <laughs> and Duke. Uh, Kansas over one. Pushing? Right. Yeah, uh, push. Keep, I'm push. Oklahoma 11. <sighs> Can't push. You can't pick push. Okay. Well, I, I it's good I value think, there. I don't know. I guess why. we're not gambling on it. You can pick push. We're they, not, yeah. You, I'm gonna be honest. They should add that. Pick push. Yeah. Pick, pick yeah. Eleven. Yeah. yeah. That would also be kind like, of a I funny like why. part of my take bit or like, something like. Well, yeah, well, I, I would I, I would love to to have a, an option to bet win total and say I'd like to bet you know that you can choose to wherever you want. It. Or no, but. Bet 11, bet 10, yeah. bet 9, bet 8. Yeah. Like, why would that even be an option? Like, I think Oklahoma's going to lose one regular season game and then go into the Big 12 championship. That's what I think is going to happen. So why would I not push? Who are they losing to, you think? No, but you They're going to – I don't – I think they might lose to so, uh, Iowa State. I think it's going to be one of those years where it's like Oklahoma and Iowa State, like, going into the Big 12 championship. are like, oh, is it going to be a repeat? Like, kind of like we saw Oklahoma Baylor a few years ago. Yeah, I'm gonna go over just because I don't think they're losing more than one game, and and you got the safety of it not being a half, though. So, so I, I'll go over. Um, so you think they're gonna go undefeated? I think they're gonna go 12 and 0 or 11 and 1. So I'm not gonna pick a push. I'm gonna, I'm gonna oh, stick to I the to my principles. Mean. Yeah. All right, uh, go. Kansas State five and a half. This was the most disappointing team to me last year. At least one of them. Them in Louisville. I thought the first year of Satterfield and Kleiman, but I really believe in Kleiman as a coach. So I'm gonna go over. Um, not a not a super easy non conference either. Stanford is is, you know, we we'll see what they are. Nevada I think is a very good non power five. A lot of team. people like Carson Strong. He's very he's a great quarterback. I think I'm gonna go over too because Kansas State is always one of those teams that it's a trickier tough situation. Okay, but here is another my theory my theory that I said earlier, you do not want your toss up games on the road and you do not want your definite losses at home and they kind of got that. Their toss-ups like uh, like Texas Tech, Kansas, uh, Texas Tech, Oklahoma State, they're on the road. Texas on the road. Kansas they'll win that. 
Uh, but they got Oklahoma and Iowa State. They're not beating those two teams anywhere. No. And they've got them at home. They got TCU at home. They got West Virginia. I at think home. that they beat Stanford. But it's only five and a half right. too. So right. hold on, everybody, relax. Yeah. Hold on. That's what I counted. I think it's going to be uh, over. Uh, uh, hold on. Add seven and I add the three and I carry the yeah. nine. Yeah. I'm going to go over with over. Kansas State. Yeah, me too. I believe in their coach. Cool. Chris Kleiman, very good coach. Yes. Agreed. And it's a low total. Oklahoma State, Ooh. seven and a half. Okay. Yes, are you, nobody going to talk? No, oh, I was counting. By the way. Over. Week three right there, Oak State at Boise State. You better believe that's on my road on trip. Your, on your road trip mm-hmm. list. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Show is. Mm-hmm. Can't look at that fucking field, You can't keep me dude. away. I can't look at that field. Have I'm fun. going to Boise. I'm going to BYU. I cannot I'm look at that my people. field. It's going to hurt my oh, eyeballs. Oh, God. Have fun. I don't think it would hurt in person, though. I do. No, you know what? I know it wouldn't hurt in person because the Tupelo Golden Wave have a blue field. Mm. Maybe it wouldn't hurt oh, your eyes. Maybe it would hurt my eyes. Oh, you just some people refine and have class over here. Who? Who are you talking about? Me or her? <laughs> Fair point. Because <laughs> I promise you, neither of us are refined <laughs> and have class. Refined? Refined. 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 I'm ref- we're, we're very refined <laughs> here. Refined and, and flassy. Yes. Yes. Just not. I'm gonna be honest. I think I might throw up again. We're refined and floozies, huh? We are floozies. Well, I'm a floozy. You know, I'm, I'm a, no, you're I not. Throw up again. You need me to finish this out. We're right well, at the well, end. Well, no, I want to. I, I wanna, can finish this out. No, I don't. No. Should we speed it up? Oklahoma State, seven and a half, go. We should say uh, speed it over. Don't holler at me. Okay. <laughs> Under. I agree, over. <sighs> I agree with Jack. I'm sorry, over. <laughs> uh, that doesn't mean I'm finished talking. I, I'm not saying that in a military sense. Over. Okay, Wait, over. What? Moving on, TCU, seven Thanks, and a half. Thanks, over. TCU, seven Wait, and so, a half. Oh, so you agree with the under. Over. Over. You got to say over at the end. Of I know, but you... So you agree with the under over? No, over. You over, agree with over. the over over. Over. over over. Yeah. TCU. You like them over? You yeah. picking everybody over? I'd say under. Under. I no, I got some unders. Overs. I agree. I like over too. <laughs> I said Kansas State under. Yeah, I like I like uh, I like TCU over as so well. So Brandon under KC over. I no. mean vice versa. I like under. over. KC under. under. Texas over. Under. We all assume Sark is going to ride in like a white knight and save this program from whatever mediocrity they've had. But I just think they're going to be the same until he gets a a legit quarterback in there. If he gets a Quinn Ewers or somebody like that or gets a guy that – if he gets a Mac Jones or a Tua, yeah. But Casey Thompson, we're all just assuming this guy's going to be good because of a half. They might lose to Louisiana. Louisiana's a tough opener. At Arkansas is not fun. At at Texas – Especially at Arkansas. uh, At TCU – uh, at Baylor, at Iowa State, at West Virginia, and then you got Oklahoma and Oklahoma State and at home. I think they're going eight and four. Yeah, I, I like I, a push here. I like under. I like under. So you're going for yeah. a push or an over, Casey? I'm going an over. Texas Tech, four and a half. <sighs> Give me under. I've been too many overs here. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go. Yeah, they're a train wreck. Yeah, I'm going to go under. Matt Wells. Over. Wow. Why, did you, why did over? you weigh in on, uh, on, on, the li- on Texas? Texas. Texas, I, uh, it's it's tough. It's, it's tough. Re- that's a really tough. I would like sit that one out. I'm just gonna say <laughs> push. To I'm gonna do my. We're not Casey. really doing the option of sitting out here. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no I'm push. doing my Casey push. Uh-huh. Um, hey, I push too. Stephen F. Austin, that's a win. I will not necessarily. Yeah, but, but can you say Houston's a definite win? You no, can't. No. I can. I think. I still sometimes marvel at the fact that Dana Holgerson had a Big Twelve job and just willingly went to Houston. Yeah. It's, is that not just weird? It is when is that strange. ever going to be not weird to me? West Virginia's a good job. Yeah, and they loved him there. And and he just went to Houston. 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 So what is your take? Under. Playoffs. <laughs> I just wanted to do a press conference. Playoffs. Playoffs. <laughs> is that? <laughs> so we're in the game. Playoffs. Yeah, Texas. Uh, Texas I think under. they could beat Houston three, and then you get Kansas four, and then I think they could sneak a win in somewhere else. Yeah, if they don't win, Matt Wells is. Mm, Where are they, they going to get it? What they could, they could, they Kansas could State take at down. Home? No, they could be Kansas State at home. They could theoretically. Mm-hmm. Maybe. All right, keep going. Baylor. Uh, I under. Have to take, I don't like I'm the smell the, of this program. Right I'm now. taking the under strictly out of principle. I don't like the smell of this program right now. They don't feel like they're heading in a good direction. Nope. Yeah, and that's Charlie Strong. Who? Huh? To Utah, Charlie Bowers. Brewer. Brewer. There, Brewer. there we go. go. Close enough. Shouldn't. Oh, Charlie Bowers. Oh, Charlie Strong. Go. 
West Virginia over six and a half. I love Neil Brown. Their defense is going to be very, very good. Over. If Deggie can be any good, I, I like them a lot. They open with uh, with with three wins, I believe. Then they got at, at Oklahoma, but then it eases up again for them. Uh, I love West Virginia sit over six and a half. I, I take them at seven and a half. I love West Virginia. Yep, West Virginia over. Go. That's Do you it. want me to read? Damn. You want me to read through my road trip, and then we'll finish it. If you want to, I'll go very quickly. That way you can do the graphic. But, well, but if sure people are listening to the show, I want them to, to, to enjoy this. Make sure you explain why you're doing this, though. Because I'll go very quickly. So last week, <laughs> we did a, a road trip on the show, a, our dream road trip. We did a graphic of it, and, and it was, uh, and frankly, these people around here. It's democracy. They just, it was all chalk. They did everything, oh, everything lazy okay. and everything, all the big programs. We had to go to Columbus, Ohio. We had to go to Penn State. We had to do all I, this. Not you, me. Wait, I'm hold going, on, hold on. Did you see the graphic about me trying to go back to Madison? No. It was so fucking funny. The one that that guy made of me staring yeah. at Dan's ass. And it was because I just, no one would let me go back to Madison. Yeah. Sad. I am Sad. opening the season in Blacksburg, Virginia, where I will spend my Friday night watching. I'm not waiting for Saturday. I'm watching the North Carolina Tar Heels, and the Virginia Tech Hokies, Lane Stadium, Inner Sandman. Ooh. I am watching this. It's good. And then, you know what? I've spent my Friday night watching this. I got my season started early. Next day, I'm just waking up, chilling, watching football all fucking day. That's what I'm doing. Not week two, September 11th, could do a lot of things. You know where I'm going? Where? The Holy War, baby. I'm going to Utah at BYU. <laughs> give me the rivalry in my veins week two. Could have also gone to Iowa, Iowa State. Don't want to give Iowa fans a satisfaction. Also, great name for a football game. Utah, BYU, the Holy War, baby. Week three, I'm coming, Boise. Boise, I'm coming. Oklahoma State at Boise. I want to see the blue field in person. Make I want to go up to Big Sky Country. Make sure you bring your blue light glasses for that. I am coming. I, I almost wrote down I wrote down Alabama, Florida, but ultimately I'm going to Oklahoma State at Boise. Week four, two of the best teams in the MAC, baby. We're going to Ooh, Ball Mac State. Shin. We're going to Muncie, Indiana. Toledo at Ball State. These are two of the best teams. In the, there's a lot of good teams there this year. Kent State's going to be good with Dustin Crum. Toledo's always pretty good. Toledo at Ball State. Week, Love a good Maction bet. Week five, I might – the next couple of weeks, I might run over with, with what we did last week because, uh, you know, there's not a whole lot. Uh, <laughs> Cincinnati at He's Notre Dame. I don't know if we picked that one, but now that I look at it, I if I want to go to Notre Dame, I'm going to go when Cincy goes. Cincinnati at <laughs> Notre Dame. Cincinnati, this is a legitimate top ten battle. That's the one Jack wanted to go to. I don't but think it's a le- and, and he was right. It's a legitimate top ten game, and we should have gone. And it's the biggest. What did we take instead? The biggest. We went to some stupid school instead. Oh, um, no, I think that week was uh, us. Oh, that's A&M Mississippi yeah. State. Week four. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, stupid Jack. Uh, we, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Week I was six. hoping it was like. I'm going to dumb. I'm going to Austin, Texas, for KZ's graphic to see Texas, Oklahoma. I'm going to the Red River Shootout. <laughs> what bar are you going to go to? Uh, shooter Shooter Magooters. I will say that it was funny. Some of the comments was like, <laughs> it was it was people said bold that you're going to watch the game in Austin and a bar or the Oklahoma Texas oh, game in a bar. Oh, people are fucking losers. Week yeah, seven. Fucking. Uh, week week seven, Florida at LSU. Aww. I will never make a road. We'll see you there. Yeah, we'll we there. did that. Oh, yeah. we'll be there. Yeah, yeah. we'll be there. Florida, it's us three. Florida at LSU. I mean, I'm never going to do one of these without going to the best stadium, and the best atmosphere in the country. Eh, week up. eight, Friday night again. Oh, I'm going. Your Saturdays are open. I'm going to Memphis at UCF. Pretty good rivalry. I'm going to UCF, baby. Give me give me the nights. We'll Num- be in South Bend. Week nine, Penn State at Ohio State. Ooh, that's a good one. Where will we be? Uh, but, but I can't find us on the – Week 10. That was when we uh, bought we'll – We'll be at Florida, Florida Georgia. Georgia. Week 10. Chestnut Hill, fall. Woo, buddy. I'd this, rather go sell games. This might be a Friday night too. Uh, <laughs> Get some pumpkin spice up there. Virginia Tech Apple. at Boston College. Tell me how ACC you can get. That's oh. just in the fall, the autumn. I'll in be Boston. apple picking – uh, Apple cider donuts. No one's, yeah, week that's 11, what they say. Atmosphere. Week 11, I'm going to go. Boston College football. Week 11, I'm going to go get my eyes raped. I'm going to watch the oh. worst the worst game possible. I'm going to watch Northwestern at Wisconsin. I'm going to watch <laughs> all three field goals. God damn it, you're going to Madison? Yep. I'm coming yep. with you. Uh, no, you're not. No, you yes, can't. I am. You can't. Yes, I am. Can't. I wanted to go. You can't. No. I wa- no. Uh, Why can't I go back democracy. to Madison? Democracy. Why two, can't I go back? Last two were chalk. Iowa State at OU. I still love that game. And Alabama and Auburn in week 13. So you'll be with us last week. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll join with y'all. You know, but wait, 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 whoa, whoa! What game did you leave off? 
I left off the Ole Miss Mississippi State game because I just yeah. said, I said it last week. So uh, yeah, yeah, of course I'm going to be at that one. But uh, Alabama. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll say um, it. So there you go. There you go. No Army Navy. This is, you don't respect well, the, tr- that's, that's, you don't respect the troops. Going. That, that you don't like the troops. I honestly feel like I should be able to do my own list now too, so I can go to Madison. Conjure your your, your phrase this week is uh, uh, chocolate chip pancakes. Chocolate chip pancakes. Cons. Text Cons. that to me when you Cons. get to this part of the show. All right, the show is over. I want to go back to Madison. You can come back to Madison. Okay. Just come with me. Yeah. Tornado room. Oh uh, yeah, forgot that was the name so of the steakhouse. So I had a migraine that day. I, I couldn't enjoy my steak. Let me tell you, I drank a lot of wine, had a lot of steak. That was a good steak. It was so good. That was like whatever clams they were. Oh. Anything else? Nope. Nope. There were clams, clams casino, by the way. What? There were clams casino, which is fried on the shell. No, they weren't fried. They were they were clams. I had clams casino. Oh, I didn't have that. Dave and I had something that was like a, with like a really, really creamy sauce on them. Ah. Anything else? No. Nope. All right. Love you all. Well, not all of you. Some of you. Okay, bye. That's Unnecessary Roughness.